the um, disaster tour guide thing. What? I keep forgetting until we play. What do you need? Make make what you what you say, Tori? The disaster tour guide nameplate, you know, instead of oh, okay. dungeon master. Yeah, mm -hmm. we need to do that. Okay, I fixed the audio. Disaster Sorry about tour that if anyone guide. was watching. I was actually thinking about getting a uh, club of mine made into a shirt recently. <laughs> Hit me up. <laughs> I still want to make the uh, the the that one with all the boys in it uh, a shirt. <laughs> Done with the Discord shills. On to Twitch and Facebook. The one with the boys. What? Uh, hang on. I, I have, I'll finish this and I'll uh, reread okay. it. I was either gonna do. I'm just a disaster. <laughs> I'll have you know, I'm just a disaster. That was a pretty good quote. We could also, if we if we were wanted to risk a lawsuit, we could do Airbnb. <laughs> all right, I think I've sent all of them out. Caleb is picking up your order. Thanks, Caleb. <laughs> Le Le O'Brien, what? <laughs> I was more thinking our friend Caleb, but Liam O'Brien is the better <gasps> Caleb. Guys, the second campaign is going to end soon. It just <laughs> ended. It already ended. Second campaign is ended. I don't know what it, to it, do it's gone. Myself. I'm still on 125. Um, but really? ah. have you heard about uh, Exandria Unlimited? Yes. Yes. Um, I don't know how I feel about it. I'm interested. She was in it. Like it genuinely just. And it's her first D and D game. <sighs> I loved her comment when she was talking about how she had the first, first, how do you want to do this? And as like, she was getting all the feedback from everyone else, or she explained it as someone walking her through her first orgasm. Like, <laughs> okay, that's one way to describe that. Jeez. Some, you know, I thought I was into D&D, &D, but some people are really into D&D. &D. <laughs> I am interested just for the pure fact of seeing Mercer as a player. That's yeah. Just, that's just me. See, I saw Mercer as a player in uh, the Deadwood thing that they did. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm like less so excited for that. But I, I'm interested to see him as a player in Exandria. Um, Hi guys, oh, welcome yeah. to the Critical Role did you watch discussion Deadwood? podcast. Yeah, oh, I did. Yeah, I did. <laughs> I loved oh, Deadwood, Deadwood was and great. Deadwood. Yeah. I, I, oh, I loved it. It was great. Um, yeah. I, I used to play, um, uh, fucking Deadlands myself, so I was like geeking out the whole time. I hope everyone is ready. I can go through the recap. All right, let me just go ahead. I need to turn y'all up real quick. So, 
uh, last we left off, the uh, group that is this <laughs> these players um, decided that they had gone to help out this village um, of Zilspar to uh, kill this beast that seems to have been stopping them from fishing in the uh, area and uh, for procuring their normal um, stock of uh, trout that they sell which keeps the town going and so on and so forth. Uh, after killing the beast, you guys found that it was covered in these black, dark crystals that you, later after investigating them, found out they were similar to dragon shards. But something seems to have been off about them. Um, you guys went, uh, cut up the beast, gathered the crystals, found that they had some sort of weird influence to them, which Violet found out but was able to resist and pull everyone up to touch them. Uh, you brought everything back to town. The village celebrated in the night. Air had an interesting interaction with uh, a new friend, we'll say. Um, and uh, Violet had an interesting conversation with um, Valerie along with uh, Lysland and uh, gained, a, gained a house, a place here in Zilspar that can, you guys can call your own. Um, the next morning, you guys uh, got up, found that Valerie and Solom had left, and after discussing some things, what you wanted to do, you decided you wanted to test a theory out with the Dark uh, Dragon Shard, and you took it out to the beach and tried to destroy it, and that didn't seem to go well. So where we left off, you guys are currently on the beach where you guys had uh, fought the Akroots, and the uh, shard that you had all blasted and attacked with all of your spells and, and weapons is sitting in a small crater with uh, now glassed sand around it from the heat of the number of the spells. And it itself, from what you can see, seems to be unharmed after it seems to have reacted very violently to the attacks. Hey. Well, that didn't seem to work. <laughs> uh, no, I would say that's a failure. I consider it a success. Uh, um, now we know that these things aren't able to be destroyed by conventional means. That's a success. I'm failure at destroying it. <laughs> we can... You know, in all those fails, you can drop it on someone, you know? I, I mean, I guess, yeah. <laughs> I go back to... It's just to give these crystals to the guys that killed us. <laughs> just a... Return to sender. <laughs> hey, you dropped these. Also, we're So what you, now? You know. I guess the best we can do is keep it out of uh, the hands of people <laughs> we don't need. We don't want see, uh, getting into it. Keep them locked up somewhere. Mm -hmm. Discreet. <clears throat> I think maybe um, me or Kale should hold on to these. I'll, I'll hold on to them, sure. <clears throat> that sounds like a perfectly, you know, reasonable idea. Yeah. <laughs> I never changed the game time. <laughs> Man, I am really failing to do these. Uh... It's okay. Alright. I'm gonna go and uh, I guess get a uh, piece of cloth to pick up the shard from. Uh, they'll be already in a, uh, my uh, cloak, but if you want it. I mean, I do kind of want it did back. Did you take your so cloth, you cloak cloth off before we nuke this thing? Because that's a that's a pretty. Oh yeah, but that question. was just one crystal. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's what I was talking of, about. The rest yeah. of them were in her. Cloak. Okay, yeah, then I'll probably <laughs> probably need yeah, to get. I'll just like, some okay sort if you. 
I got the couple yeah, of stacks from the town. We can put them in that. That's a good. Okay, idea. cool. Yeah, that's great. So I'll just like use the cloak to sort of put them in the in the sack. As you get close to the one that you guys attacked, um, Violet, and you kind of like reaching forward to kind of scoop it in, you just hear this very slight. It's almost at the edge of perception and kind of like pause it. Nothing else. You don't hear anything else after that. Oh, that's what I was trying to tell you before while you were on the phone as well. Um, my uh, passive perception and passive insight are both 18 now. Gotcha. Cool. Um, okay. Um, being Violet, the curious thing that she is, I'm just going to be like, Hello? Make a perception check. <laughs> Uh, I want this one. Mm. Uh, 14 plus 8. Alright. So, you kind of, like, lean down, not touching it, but just like, hello? And you, you hear a, kind of like a, kind of sound and not quite sure what it is but then you kind of look and it looks like a part of the crystal itself is still slightly superheated by the fire and it seems to be kind of uh sizzling against the sand underneath it that itself has been turned to almost a glass underneath it okay i will Can I, can I, can I? I will create like an, a little puff of wind with my um, druid craft, trying to like blow it off. Okay, so you kind of like, kind of blows and you see, uh, you see actually some like, kind of like steam almost kind of come off of it as you blow um and you you all you don't you also notice as your kind of the air from your spell passes over it there's a slight pulse to the inside and you can see something shifting inside not like a something like object but like just movement inside the crystal as if the inside of it is fluid um and as the Air then passes and stops. The shifting stops. Okay, I will um, touch my cloak to it and try to see if it's still hot. Seems to have cooled down. Okay, I'll pick this one up and just yell up to Kale and be like, um, I, think, I think I'm going to hold on to this one. Uh, you hold on to the rest of them. All right. I'll hold on to this one. <laughs> That's actually probably a good idea, considering, you know... Never mind. <laughs> sure. Well, I, I'll take your word for that. <clears throat> so, can you guys gather the crystals? What would you guys like to do now? Um, we should go back to town real quick. Do we have something we need to do in town? I actually yeah. need your help tying a couple of baskets to my saddlebags, but beyond that, I think we're pretty much done. Um, okay. Well, we we should probably get a cart for the road, and I also need to talk to Zog just a little bit. You gonna extort him again? Sort of? Yes. Okay. Nice. Uh, <laughs> as long as we're clear about what your intentions are, then... <laughs> Don't worry. It's fine. I mean, yeah, it's just extortion. Good. It's just extortion. I'm not certain yeah. how I feel about that. Sure. Fine with it. it's, a, it's a common thing up here. Like, Look, I'm, extortion I'm really is very just, common. I'm really just going to make sure that somebody looks after Valerie's shop now that she's gone. 
and also that maybe we get a little bit of the profits, but... <laughs> Merrick is kind of walking up the beach. He's like, I mean, we did save their town. They do still kind of owe us. Yeah, money is nice. That's kind of why I'm out here. I happen to know they are exactly four gold richer, so... <laughs> All right. Okay. So you so guys we go head to back town. to town. It's about another half hour that way. Um, the uh, once you get into town, there's plenty of people that greet you. It's not the same like crowd as it has been the last couple times you came to town, but there are people who are like, oh hey, and wave and, and whatnot. And um, you looking specifically for Zog? Yep. Right. Um, you ask. Oh, about I'll him. go check on Valerie's shop first. First, okay. Uh, you head there. And there are no candles or lights on in the windows. Um, you can just go up to the door and open it. Yeah. Uh, it opens up. And you step inside. And it looks very bare in here. But and at first you're like, how the hell did she get everything? And But then you look back on the, um, uh, on the table that where she kind of had her... Uh, interaction with you in, in the in the very beginning, um, and there is a large um, kind of burlap sack that is tied at the top, and there is a small piece of paper that is just laying against the uh, sack itself. Well, I'm all, I'm gonna open the piece of paper. Uh, you kind of unfold it, and it says, "I assumed you would come and check on this place before you left. I left you what I could spare." <laughs> Called out. <laughs> <laughs> I, I look what's in the bag I uh, oh I tucked the note away I gotta make a note of that inside is a um, essentially anything you would need in the sense of doing normal um, uh, rituals so basic stuff nothing that's too expensive but any as much incense and as much tea bags and as much those kind of things as you would need for about uh, a month's worth of time. Okay. Um, so any basically uh, for the next there... month, anytime you would need something that would be basic ritual stuff, you essentially could just Imagine you have it in this bag for a while. There's no gold in there at all? No money, no. <laughs> ah, fuck. Okay. All right, sweet. Guys, maybe we don't need to go talk to Zog. We just see her walking out with a sack and saying that. <laughs> she just yeah. stole all this shit <laughs> through our eyes. I'm like, nice. You really got a lot. Did you I didn't, that steal, look, I didn't steal you. anything. She she left mm -hmm. it to me. No, she, she did look at the snow. It. Look! Inside, no, inside check. check. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> she's holding out a note from Valerie. Yeah, but I don't I'm know like... what her handwriting looks like. She was gone. And she was like, oh yeah, okay. I'm gonna steal everything and just scribble this thing down to prove my innocence. No inside check. Ten. I got a fifteen. <laughs> Hard to read. <laughs> I'm gonna take a look at the uh, the note. Take a look. No, it says the same thing. Mm -hmm. I knew you would. I knew you would visit here before you left. I left you what I could spare. Oh, so she knew she you were gonna try to you know loot her shop. Yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> From what I gathered last night, it's always a they sign of a good friend. Come, you know, when friends. they know you're gonna burgle them. <laughs> She's she's a very smart person. I liked her. She was cool. Where to now? I don't need to go talk to Zog anymore. I was going to see if he would let us have the magic shop and, like, you know, put somebody in charge of it. But now that the magic shop's gone. Maybe we could have someone replace it with a different shop. Ah. <sighs> You want to do that, Kale? Because I feel like I had more weight with the magic shop. <laughs> I don't particularly care what <laughs> shop is there, but like 
we say that, you know, hey, you know, if we're, if we inherited the house, did we inherit the shop too? Maybe we could sell it. Sell the building. And maybe we could. Maybe we could sell it. You know, at the very least, we should at least tell him that we did inherit the house, because he might not know that, and he might think that we had stolen idea. the house. Yeah, it's probably a good idea. You guys After all, Zod, someone but... uh, sp is spirited away in the middle of the night, now fairies are living in their house? That's the, you know, I'm pretty sure that happens in some reasonable, reason, regional places. I don't know. <clears throat> I have killed no fewer than three humans that came to the Feywild hunting for fairies because of that exact reason. I'm glad I'm not one of them. Okay. Mm. You keep saying that. I, I mean, you know, I, I, I think I have a bit of experience with dying by now, so, you know. Just a little. Just a, just a tiny smidgen, you know. Alright, well, uh, you guys can nice. easily go and find Zog. Uh, he is at his office actually now. Um, it's a it's a decently sized building for the for the rest of the town. Uh, he has kind of a uh, he's a secretary out front, um, which is a, uh, a a young boy actually. He's probably twelve, um, and he just kind of has organized papers around him. And when you walk in, he's can I help you? I point to, uh, who, who's gonna... What do we need from here? I don't hey. remember. Oh, yeah. Are we doing hey, anything? hey, 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 uh, hey, kid. Do you mind if we, uh... Is your boss in? Is Zog in? Because we like uh, to have war with him. Yes, yes, he is. Give me just a moment. And he kind of stands up, and you see him kind of race off towards the back, and he goes to a door, and just... And uh, about a few seconds later, the door opens up, and you see Zog. Uh, yes, Jeffrey, what's up? Uh, you have some visitors. Uh, oh, uh, he sees you as he looks up. Um, just give me just a moment, and he closes the door. And you see him come out a few minutes later as uh, Jeffrey comes They're back put on to the pants. <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> Jeffrey comes back to the to the, to the front mm -hmm. desk and kind of sits there and just smiles brightly at you all. Um, and, uh, then Zog comes out, and he's dressed in his fine clothes, as usual, and, uh, his hair seems a little unkept, um, and he kind of looks at all of these, what, uh, what can I do for all of you? Uh, yes, uh, just, uh, just so you know, uh, from, from some circumstances that I don't feel the need to explain right now. We have actually inherited a uh, property in the city. Ah, yes. Uh, Valerie's place. So yeah. She, she gave me the paperwork uh, yesterday. Yesterday afternoon, she talked to me about it. Well, we were just kind of wondering what happens with her shop now. Uh, she says it's to be closed at the moment until she gets back. Uh, she said she took all of her she said she was going to take all of her stuff with her. Um, we And she's paid me quite a bit to uh, keep the taxes on it up to date for the next few months at the very least. She's going to come back? She plans to come back. Good. She didn't say one way or the other, but I assumed. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, okay. But at the very least, what you're saying is we don't have to worry about someone else setting up shop there for the next few months. No. It is, uh, it is hers until the money she gave me run, gives me uh, runs out. Which, from the look of it, probably be about six or seven months. Is that... Uh, about, around how long in the year is that? I'm not entirely sure. From now, like, what month it would be? More like, how, how does that compare in like a calendar wise? Like, is that like half a year, a quarter oh, of a it's, year? It's, there's 12 months to the year. Okay. Okay, so that's actually close to home. Excellent. Well, there's your answer, Violet. Oh, 
Yeah, no, I'm happy with that answer. It means she's coming back. Is there anything else cool. you can do for an interview? Uh... What time of day is it? Uh, at this point, if you guys have woken up, done your stuff, gone to the beach, come back, it's probably close to about 11 o'clock in the morning. You want to get some brunch? Asking Zog. Yeah. <laughs> Did um, we need a cart? I have <clears throat> some meetings I have to attend to as things are now getting, we have to start setting up, getting back into our fishing routines. Um, but uh, I can provide a cart for you if you can eat it. The cart would be nice. Mm-hmm. Cart would be good. Um, yes, apparently they desire a cart and they're going to pull it themselves. It's very interesting. I've never seen <laughs> two legs do that. I know. I'm, I'm pretty sure there's a lot of assumptions that's going on right now. You see, you see Zog look at you in kind of like a confused way, and then goes, "Oh, uh, yeah, no, we can provide a horse." <laughs> <laughs> Good. I just thought that. Never mind. I feel like Yorin could carry Again, it. Like, not the Yorin could definitely burden. pull it. I mean, I can also turn into a horse like two times a day. If, unless I rest. If I re No, that's a moon druid. Never mind. I'll can... drive which, the damn cart. I could do which it. Which direction do you all plan on going? I can give you enough feed to get yeah, to where you're going. Yeah, pick a random going. one. No, we're Sharn. not picking a random we're going one. To Gosh, yeah, we're going are to we Sharn. going to Sharn? That's a, that's a, that's literally what we talked about last night and this morning, wasn't it? Was yeah, last night just clasped both of his hands on his hands, uh, one that's shoulder cool. on Shior and one on Cam. These two want to go to Sharn. I have things to do um, there. I want to pick a random direction and walk, but no. I also want to pick idea. a random direction. And okay, walk. But... see, yeah, <laughs> but. Where we're gonna go find the person who put the, you know, the thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We were gonna do that too. Well, yeah, but where? From my do experience, we even start? powerful mages like to be around other powerful mages so they can steal their secrets. That seems to be the kind of thing you might be able to find in high places in Shan. You see, that's you see, kind of what my assumption was. So yeah. You see, so kind of like look out the window, like he's like checking the time of day. He's like, um, <laughs> uh, like I said. Um, here you get, like, reaches over, uh, he's like, Jeffrey, uh, give me a piece of paper, thank you, uh, and the pen, he kind of writes down this thing, he's like, bring this to the stable, and they shall provide you with the horse and the cart and the feed needed to get to, as far as Sharn, at the very least. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Zog, you are very accommodating. Yes, thank you very I much. I hope that the fish come back. This is the least I could do to, uh, accommodate, even though I can't really... Provide monetary value at the moment, so this is the least I can do. Sell the horse later. <laughs> All right, Zog, take care is of it, yourself. Does Ara realize she says that out loud? <laughs> <laughs> no, she just says it. <laughs> I see Zog just kind of... Hmm. And... <laughs> <laughs> and then says, I must be on my way. And he kind of like gathers up some papers that are on the front, uh, the, the desk by Jeffrey. Did you were you gonna say something, Cal? I was gonna say I was gonna take the paper from him. Oh yeah, that, yeah. And takes that, and he gathers up the rest of his papers, gathers them up, <clears throat> bows slightly, and says, "Have a good day, you all. And if you are leaving, I await your return fondly. Good luck. Any... Good luck to you as well. Let's go." Can I quickly druid craft to check the weather for the next 24 hours? Sure. <laughs> uh, you... It is going to be sunny. Hooray, sunny! I forgot to mention it, but when we were at the beach, uh, Shiorin filled her water skin with some more salt water. Gotcha. Ah uh, yes, the salt water on the gore strewn beach. <laughs> it's a bit Yum. more protein and a little bit more she, iron. It's she went right. off to the she went off to the side a little bit where it was less chummy. She goes she goes slightly okay, into into the, the sea. You know? She go she go into the sea and get some like not so land dwelling water. Um 
But you guys go get your cart, get your get the horse. Um, it seems healthy and uh, able, and uh, get in a feed, get all your stuff packed up on the cart itself. Um, with everything that Lyslin has collected, whether he's uh, are you carrying it on yourself or are you carrying it in the, in the cart? Uh, for the most part, I think I can fit a good deal of it in my saddlebags. Uh, probably like the shovel and like the harpoons that we're keeping, uh, we'll have on the cart. Okay. And then, yeah, so it's, yep, that should work. So yeah, you guys could fit most, the, the rest of you actually on there because, uh, life when I doubt will be on it himself and, uh, with the two fairies and just the two human it should be just fine. Um, with whoever wants to drive it. I'll drive. <laughs> Sharon wants to drive, but she doesn't know how. I have stolen something from the house that we own, so I didn't really steal it. <laughs> I have now made my hammock for Lyslin's horns. So <laughs> I'm just going to lay across them. Did you get permission? <laughs> <laughs> no, I just start talking. <laughs> I just start tying this piece of fabric to his horns. <laughs> Is this like a slingshot that are we going to propel you at the enemy? We can use that later, but right now, no. And I'll just, like, go in. I, like, crane my head back and forth. You end up rocking back and forth, like... Okay, cool. <laughs> Lyslin, did you say you needed help securing some baskets? Oh, uh, yes, just tie them to the uh, edge of the saddlebags and it should be fine. All right, I'll do that for you. Go ahead and help him with that. So you guys take a few minutes to do that, and by the time you guys are on your way out of town, it's close to about uh, midday. Um, and are you guys you guys are heading in the direction of Sharn? That mm -hmm. is the final verdict. I guess. <laughs> okay. So you guys head off on head off on the road, and it's a decently well kept road this way, going uh, west. I have a question. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How long has it been since we were in Sharn? Guesstimate. I know we don't know how long we were dead. Well, we traveled for six days. We've spent two days in town here, so at the very least, eight days. Probably closer to nine at the very latest. Yeah, it's been... My calculations are right. Um, it's been about... 14 days since you guys were in Sharn. Okay, yeah, so when was the hunt supposed to happen? The next day. Oh, so we missed it. Yeah. Okay, yeah, <laughs> okay. That's what I needed to know. <laughs> Great. Gotta work myself out of that mess with Dane. But... I gotta work myself with, out of that mess with uh, Zamas. <laughs> well, find a new thing to kill to prove yourself. Yeah, hopefully well, not the same people who killed us last time. So for all they know, they think you're dead, most likely. So mm -hmm. you can yeah, just leave can it really that way. Stay out of lower shard. Yeah, just like disguise disguise yourselves when we go back in there, maybe. Because y'all are so easy to blend into yeah. a crowd. Me, I can. Me. I'm just some dude. <laughs> okay, <laughs> me and Violet, fairies, <laughs> and a horseman. In a horseman. <laughs> That's just a voice. Okay, we're we'll just gonna lady. drape my cloak over well, my Fjord head and call me a weird to, horse. You know, it's like it's like Thor with his cloak. It's like you can't tell if it's me. Yeah, it's you this. can't. You can't see. That's what Sjorin would do, and it would mm. be fine. Y'all can polymorph, right? Some, some. Not yet. Can. It's like, no. Oh. That's a fourth level spell. Yeah, I'm. I'm not. I didn't mean polymorph, but you know, change wild shape forms into something else. Yeah, wild shape. Yeah. I can do that. Yeah, for an hour a day, or for an hour mm -hmm. per cast, twice a day. But you guys head in the ways. You guys are discussing these topics, um, and <clears throat> it's a pretty fair day. Nothing really happens um, uh, on the first day of the trip. It's going to take. Uh, it'll take you about four days of travel to get to Sean from here. Uh, if it's getting closer towards uh, sundown, 
and nothing has like happened on the road, I'd go ahead and use my daily speak with animals to just talk with this horse, find out what's up. Um, as it's going along, um, what do you say to the horse? So it does not interact with you in, uh, right away. I'll so, join in. Tell me your story. Kind of like <laughs> turns and looks at you and I pull your cart. Why? Well, it seems we'll be traveling together for a while at the very least. I want to know more about you. Not many people ask the opinions of um, things they call beast of burden. No. No one ever asked me anything besides if I want an apple. As, as that's being said, I, I want Kale to Kale unconsciously just offering the thing, uh, offering the horse an apple. <laughs> as he turns around. <laughs> How did you know he wanted an apple? <laughs> I mean, what? He want? I mean, horses want apples. I mean, that's just a default thing, isn't it? I don't know. Nothing Please more. offer Lysland an apple. <laughs> Would you like an apple? <laughs> <laughs> not, not, don't want you to think I'm being racist by offering an apple. I'm just saying. <laughs> Hold on, I've lost my coin. <laughs> Why would that be racist? I'm not, I don't know. Is it the same reason I was asked for if I eat fish? Do you? Yes. Okay. <laughs> you know I do, but it's not because I'm a ho I'm part horse. I, I just like apples. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay. That's. You know what? That's fine. You like what you like. Here's an apple. I guess. It's dried I apple, guess. but you know it's. <laughs> the horse for the cup for the duration of the spell uh, talks to you about how it was born there and uh, what it doesn't know the name of the town is Zilspar, but I guess by it's talking into that town and uh, it uh, did a few years of helping uh, till some of the land, uh, but was then picked to drive this cart. Tell us about how it does. It does miss running. I'd like to run. A runner. Well, I'm fairly certain I can keep up with you. You've probably got no reason to run away from us. We've got food, apples. Uh, every now and then, we can let you run free. Oh, thank you. Uh, Are you talking to that horse? Of course I'm talking to the horse. I can run with you. Can you ask him can you ask his name? Do you have a name? Something your parents called you or something they called you before you were given to us? Something you would well, like I'm to not, be called. Not really sure what a name is. Uh, though uh, the, name people, is... the people there called me uh a they, they when they would say uh, the name Harold, I, 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 I come. But that was just because I knew whenever they said that, they needed me for something. Is that what a name is? Yes, uh, the thing that they call to get your attention or get you to come to them. Yes. Oh, I guess Harold then. Do you like it? I didn't know it was a name, so I didn't really care. All right. Uh, it seems his name is Harold. Uh, we can change it. He doesn't seem particularly attached to it, although it might take a little bit to get him accustomed to something else. I think Harold's fine. Okay, we're going to keep calling you Harold. Harold it is. Hi, Harold. Where are we going? Uh, a big, very terrible city with not a lot of green. It is going to be very uncomfortable. I apologize for taking you there. So you cannot... <laughs> He's kind of shakes his head. He's like, that doesn't sound very... Uh... Good. Why are we going there? A few of us need to go there. 
hopefully we'll be gone very soon and we can go back to green places. This conversation continues until the spell ends. Mm -hmm. And uh, you guys settle down. Do you guys want to stay on the road at, uh, when it gets down to dark and you guys need to rest? Or what would you guys do? I think we got to park just off the road in like a clear setting that is yeah. at least, the, you know, the road has... throughout the day. The road throughout the day has been curving slightly mm -hmm. north, uh, along, kind of following along the cliff face that uh, resides to the south. Um, you guys kind of pull off a, a bit off the road and start setting up camp. Um, who would like to be the first one on watch? I'll watch. Okay, that is. So you guys settle down, eat your meal for the night, get the, uh, get the fire going if you guys want to. Um, Kale, if you could make a perception check for me. Uh, that is a 21. 21. Okay. Uh, the first couple hours of the night uh, it passes without really much issue at all. Um, you, uh, uh, It's a clear night and it's quiet and there's not really anyone on the road going this way uh, during the night. Um, nothing too special. Who are you going to wake up? You can wake me up. All He's right, walking I'll wake a hammock. <laughs> <laughs> tap, 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 waking, tap. Uh, waking up air. Air, if you could make a perception check for me. Yeah. And I am. Rolled a natural one. Oh, boy. All right. <laughs> oh, that's a four. And thus hey. we die again. And of course. <laughs> um... You are completely very distracted. distracted by the sky. Very yeah, distracted. Yeah, I'm by looking the sky. up. It is a beautiful set of stars, and you can see the shining uh, rings of Kyber that uh, surround the planet. And it is a uh, you are lost in it for uh, you all of a sudden realize, oh shit, it's probably been a couple hours. <laughs> <laughs> that seems on in, on brand, you know. I'm um, like, hmm, maybe I shouldn't take watches. <laughs> who are you gonna wake up? Um, I will wake up Lyslin. All right. <laughs> He's probably better at watching things than me. And then I'm just going to fly straight up and go into a cloud because this isn't for me down here. It is, it is a things. cloudless night tonight. Damn. Can I, can I just hover and sleep? Is that, is that possible? I mean, yeah, you would, yeah. Okay. Then I'm going to do that. Just go. I mean, you're not very, you know, if I, it, Without a cloud, you have to kind of stay decently low to the ground. Mm, might as well choose the hammock. <laughs> yeah, then the hammock is better. <laughs> I'll just be like, okay, have a good watch, and then I'll just like... I'll try not to jostle you too much. By the way, it's was fine. there anything? You seem to <laughs> no, have taken a couple of hours. No, nothing. Absolutely right, nothing happened. It should happened. be perfectly fine. <laughs> yeah, right. nothing happened. It was a great watch. I did a great job. And then I, I just like... Bad. Yeah, I was gonna say it's like a passive <laughs> sixteen inside enough to beat yeah. that, or yeah, I gotta make a deception check. Yep. <laughs> okay, why was that a natural twenty? <laughs> okay, that's I didn't need to lie about that, but it's a nope. twenty-six. <laughs> All right, I'll just take her word at it. Yep. <laughs> uh, Lice will make a perception check. Sure thing. Uh, natural 17 for a 26. Nice. Right. Um, air. When you fall asleep. Yeah. <laughs> Saw that coming. Uh, you have another flashing of images. This one you actually seem to almost are able, able to tell some elements of the, of the visions. Uh, what you notice are one red eyes looking at you from every direction. And then you feel something kind of crawl over your shoulder and it feels kind of slimy. And when you look, you see this dark black uh, tentacle looking 
appendage that is just kind of like sliding over your shoulder and it wraps quickly around your arm tight and then rips you backwards and you start racing backwards and as you do your vision is flashing past more of these images and you are suddenly then stopped with enough force that it feels like it should hurt but you just all of a sudden at a standstill with no actual like physical repercussions of a sudden stop in that in that way and you are face to face with this dark figure with glowing red eyes and all it says is inside your head you feel it and it's that same thing deeper and you just feel it resonate through you you make a wisdom saving throw what needs to go deeper sorry i'm taking notes once again you go good day. did you have to say it that way <laughs> Yes. Okay, wisdom, I don't think I add anything to that. Yeah, it's uh, 15. 15, okay. Uh, Lyslin, you as you're on your watch are... Um, nothing seems to be happening too much, but a good like hour or so in, you start to hear uh, kind of just struggling sounds coming from air up in her a uh, hammock and you can feel her twisting and turning jolting kind of uh jerking around a little bit inside the hammock um to a point at one point she actually lets out a bit of a gasp like she's like coming up from water and she actually bursts out of the hammock and begins to fall out of like kind of fall past you kind of hits one of your antlers and, <laughs> and starts to fall past <clears throat> If possible, I'd attempt to catch her. Yeah, it's not too hard. You're like, oh, shit, and kind of catch her as she uh, falls. And there you come to having, being caught by uh, Lyslin. Oh, okay. <clears throat> Thanks for that. <laughs> like, Are you okay, little one? Yeah, yeah, I'm great. <laughs> Are you really okay, restful little one? Sleep. Really restful sleep. <laughs> Are you okay, little one? <laughs> Thumbs up, bro. <laughs> okay. Be careful next time. I know it's a new bed and all, but keep yeah, yourself I'm, in it. I'm just a, a mover while I sleep, you know? Eris, you are <laughs> coming quickly to consciousness and realizing that that was possibly a dream. You look up at Lyslin, and you see his eyes glow red. Oh, shit. Okay. You blink, and he's normal. I am going to slowly back up. Are you uh, okay, I'm gonna like one. I'm gonna kinda I'm gonna lift myself out of his hands and then just hover myself back while giving him the side eye. <laughs> and then I'm going next to Violet. <laughs> Wherever she is. Am I sleeping at this point? Sorry, I smelt yeah. burning, so I had to like check. No, you're good, you're still yeah. sleeping. There's like the little, just like a little bubble of spit, like, <laughs> and she like breathes. <laughs> the whole anime th sleeping thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Pop. Right. Who do you wake up for the last round lesson? I'll wake up Merrick. All right. <sighs> Should be morning soon. Get some rest if you can, Leslie. I will. Uh, keep an eye out on the little one. She seems to be uh, having a restless sleep. Kind of looks over. Which one? <laughs> the bright one. Ah. The um, nightlight. Definitely <laughs> will. Oh, hold light. on. And uh, he'll give hand over the whistle. If anything happens, I figure shocking noise. I will use it. Lyslin will just bed down, kind of close to Harold. All right. Rest of the night happens, and uh, Merrick 
wakes you guys up as the sun is cresting over the horizon as you guys get going on your second day. Uh, anything else you want to do in the morning, or are you just going to head out? The only thing I do every morning, Pinky, check the weather. <laughs> uh, it is going to be sunny again. I'm going to remove that Actually, exhaustion. I'll also go ahead and keep an eye out for like any like ponds or streams that we pass by. Okay. Uh, what were you saying, Sharon? I'm going to remove that exhaustion level. Okay. Yes, your hangover Please. is now gone. <laughs> Before we leave, I make uh, I druid craft little periwinkles and marigolds where we were. Be right back. That does raise the question: What are the local flowers in my hair today? Um. What are the local flowers in my hair flowers. today? Um. Yeah. Every day I sprout local flowers from my hair. Uh, they're not That's too good. different from what they were back in Soulspar. It's still pretty similar. Okay, just make it sure. Mm -hmm. just, so they they like how does okay I need to know how this works because there's no fucking way that Violet hasn't noticed this. So, like they they just pop the fuck up out your hair. Yeah, they like does grow out of my hair like them? vines. And no, it you've seen him pull them out of his hair numerous times with seemingly no issue. Okay. Cool. You got your hammock. I'm sitting on the biggest flower I can find. I'm just sitting on it. I'm zipping today. Hmm. No hammock for me. Zip, zip, zip. Um, you know, air... Violet, this is not the first time that I've had a little one decide to ride in my hair. Oh, yeah? Who else has been sitting out the flowers? Uh, so many. <laughs> a dear friend of mine, <laughs> her name was uh, Chrissy M. She was a lot like you. Uh, maybe less... Evil. <laughs> I'm not evil! I'm just mm, less than... Dubious. Corsa? I'm not evil. So you've known other fairies? Many. Villages. Ah! Cool. <laughs> Once I actually helped uh, teach a battalion of pixies to ride <gasps> bees, that was very fun. I wanna ride bees! Look, I... I won't do it right now, just in case we get in trouble. That kind of sounds terrifying. I can terrifying. make bees! <laughs> oh, Kel, you have no idea. It was amazing. They rode them as cavalry, and they would ride them into battle against other pixies and hobgoblins. Seeing these bees, the size of, um, I'm not sure if you have them here, uh, hamsters? They're like rats, but chubby and fat. Yes. Great. So you know them. Uh, yes, bees the size of hamsters flying at your face, stinging through the mail of your face while little pixies spear your face. I think I've had a nightmare like that once. <laughs> it was a thing to behold. What are bees and hamsters? Fun. Well, um, bees are, um, bees are, they have wings, and they fly around, and they pick up the powdery stuff from one flower, and take it to another flower, and makes that flower grow, but then, while they're there, they eat this sweet stuff out of the flower, and then they take it back to the hive, and they throw it up. Maybe they poop it. They poop it it's both. into... They do that into these little, like, waxy shells, right? Where they keep their babies, and then their babies eat it, and then pop out of the shells. You know the stuff that I was covering Kale with on the beach? Yes. That's honey. Eat That's poop. what they grow up. Oh. These are those sweet things that covered him in it. They sound yeah, like interesting some of that creatures. last night. Yep. America kind of speaks up. It's good on food. So does it, uh, <laughs> creatures that cover him and uh, leave him with uh, this honey, those are the bees? That's yes. bees. Oh. So those ones are specifically magical bees, but yes. Those, uh... Your people ride those? 
I guess. <laughs> Some smaller again. people than like, us. <laughs> I feel like you're just a little bit bigger. It might be a little bit harder. That that they're does tiny. beg the question, what is a hamster? You said they're as big as hamsters. Small. They're like, uh, have you ever seen a mouse? <laughs> oh, oh, hold on. Yes, I know I... what I can do. And I turn into a hamster. <laughs> 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 Oh, there's oh one. Oh my gosh, you're giving me sky high vibes. <laughs> I don't know if that was a hamster. <laughs> what did she turn into? I don't remember. Oh, but... it's so cute. Yes, so that is a hamster. Uh, they're also very um, not great to eat. Very okay. little meat. Okay, so not like baby sheep. No, baby sheep are much better. It would take about uh, six or seven hamsters to equal one of those cuts of your baby sheep. Hmm. And baby I... sheep have about uh, 15 or so of those, so it's also more economical. I can see how you'd, uh, you'd be able to ride these things. Thank you. I, I, that was very, very informative. This, um... I'm just vibing as a <laughs> hamster now. Hold on. Wait, I have a mechanical question here. Is mm. it normal, and should I be able to? I mean, obviously, I should be able to because D and D says D and D Beyond says I should be able to. But I'm confused because I thought Wild Shape was an hour, and for some reason, my Wild Shape lasts two hours. It's uh, it equals your um... half your proficiency bonus. Yeah, half your proficiency oh, bonus in hours. Okay, it was the level. Of, got it. Sweet as cool. I was freaking out. So I was like, I, what All did right. I do? Yeah, I now you guys got that. two hours of wild shape per transformation. I do not because I took two uh, levels hours. of okay. uh, fighter. So I still I have do. one hour. <laughs> um, this conversation is happening as you guys are continuing along. And the edge of the forest that you guys had come out of farther uh, east... Uh, it's kind of coming, to, it kind of comes out a ways and uh, gets a little closer along the side of the road as it continues to kind of move a little bit of, a little bit more north and then continues uh, west. But as you guys are passing by, uh, probably a good maybe 20, 30 feet from a, the edge of this kind of uh, edge, the corner of the forest, um, you guys hear a very soft little. Am I still a hamster? Yeah. I ignore it. I'm flying above the trees. You are still or, a hamster. I'm, what is all What is that? I'm gonna like scurry from one of Shoren's shoulders to the other one, like <laughs> poke out of her hair, like oh shit. <laughs> you guys want anything to make make a perception check? I will. Yeah. I will too. I need to use hamster stats for that. Cause hamster stats. <laughs> it's a four anyway. So <laughs> Soft money. Uh, eight plus. You said perception. Yeah. That is eleven. I rolled a ten. A ten. So that's a sixteen for me. Sixteen. So ten for you, Eric. Mm -hmm. Lyson? Soft 20. Okay. And what was yours total V? I don't know, because I don't I need to use hamster you keep, stats. You keep your you keep your mental stats as a hamster because uh, because of wild shape. You're not polymorphed. Okay. Yeah, you keep your then it's uh, four plus eight. Yeah, you keep your intelligence, wisdom, and charisma unless the creatures is higher and then you take the better. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, then uh, okay. Lyslin and uh, Lyslin, Kale, and Violet all see at the edge of the forest a, uh, a small um, pitch black cat. Uh, it is currently sitting in a bit of an odd position. It's almost kind of on its side um, as it is kind of propped up on its two front paws and it's looking in your direction. And you just kind of hear this soft wow. coming from it. I'm just gonna like. What do you say? Lunch or crap? Down. 
Looks like I a trap to me. That, but... <laughs> a cat? I'm not, I don't need cats. No. Cats are adorable. <laughs> they're little murder machines, but they're adorable. Like the train? Not quite the same, but, you know, in concept, sure. If Can you, I tell if about you... how big it is? It's a normal house cat from, your, from where you're at. It's about 20, 30 feet off. It slowly gets up on all, all fours, and you see it kind of stumble a little bit to one side, and then it switches just a pad towards you guys. Hmm. I'll cast okay. uh, Speak with Animals. Yeah, new day, new speak. Hmm. Uh, give me just a second. My little hamster paws just get tighter on Shiran's shoulder. Are you okay? I can hear. I can understand you with uh, Speak with Animals. You can understand me? Cool. Eats hamsters. Oh. Um. You uh, you cast speak with animals, mm -hmm. and you wait for the cat cat to get up to you guys. I'll call out a little ways. Are you injured, little one? Continues to pad forward. <laughs> and it kind of uh, comes up to uh, gets a little closer. So, no. I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, yell down. Did it answer? <laughs> we can't understand doesn't, it. Doesn't understand. Do, doesn't answer back in any intelligible way that you can understand. Hmm. Did it I answer? I grab one of the harpoons and I throw it at it. You throw it at it. <laughs> oh my god! Or at it. it. <laughs> wow. <laughs> All right. Long attack. We're about to watch this cat get impaled by a fucking harpoon. Naturally, and turns out, turns out it's not a fucking oh, like it's not friends. a DM trap. It's literally just to show us how fucking shit we are as people. <laughs> uh, your harpoon <laughs> stabs through the cat, and it uh, vanishes. Why, Slim? What would cat vanishes? <laughs> okay, <laughs> sweet. <Okay. laughs> he didn't just okay. harpoon a cat. I feel Do like I know I what's happening? Oh, Tori gosh. does? Smart. <laughs> does Sharon know about uh, familiars? Yeah, Make it a contract if you want. Hmm. <laughs> Let's go with this one. I don't know if you're listening anymore. You can come out. I won't harpoon you. Uh, so that's a the 17. Cat looked like a domestic cat, right? It didn't look like Solon. <laughs> no, it did not look like Solon. Uh, the, uh, um, that would have been you, you get no answer from the woods. And, um, Chiaran, you partially aware of familiars that that could possibly what be what it was. Um, and might explain why your speak with animals didn't work, because familiars are fake. Hmm. Oh, it must have been. I think it might have been a familiar. Um, now that begs the question of what kind of magic user would be here attempting to lure us with a seemingly injured familiar. Kale I'm not going by, I'm curious. Sword and he's just like ready to go in case. I'm still a hamster. You know, at this point, like everything's trying to kill us, I think. So, you know, let's just be prepared. You want to check out the woods? Then. I kind of want to. Uh, so, so, you know, I do too, in a way. I would love to check out the woods. <laughs> All right, little one, let's go then. You guys head towards the woods then? Mm -hmm. uh, at the very least, me and Eric. still on Chiorn's shoulders. I do too. I do too. I'm going to... Um, 
Is Merrick and Violet going? Yeah. I'm on your shoulder. All right. So Violet would be with me regardless. Merrick's going? Mm hmm Sounds like everyone's going, so I might as well follow along. Right. Uh, Someone should probably stay with, animals with the cart. I'll stay I'm with gonna, the cart. I'm going to also say uh, to Harold, we'll be right back. We're going to check out something that could be nefarious. Uh, hopefully we'll be back. If not, um, go back to Zilspar. That's the town that you were raised in. Noted. And just kind of a nod, just like, well, thank you for not taking me into the danger. Yes, uh, make sure you stay safe. I'm going to make sure he's unhooked from the cart so that mm -hmm. he can run if he needs to. Okay. I'm just going to chill as a hamster on the back of Harold. <laughs> just... <laughs> I feel like someone should... We just tried... Somebody just tried to lure us into the fucking woods. Somebody <laughs> should worked. probably stay with the cart to make sure it don't disappear. It worked. <laughs> um, you guys... Head into the head into the woods, and it's pretty uh, sparse at this point. Um, if you want, you can make a either survival or perception check. Whoever's leading. Uh, I've got either a plus six in survival or a plus nine in perception. If you guys want me to do it, that works. Survival yeah, is you're, probably the best yeah, for you. <laughs> I have a plus six in uh, survival. However, I will do this. I I basically. Uh, Pat him on, pat uh, Lyson on the back, and and uh, say he's like, "Hey, good luck." And I inspire him. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'll guide I'll him. My best. <laughs> I'm just gonna try to stay hidden in the forest. <laughs> so now Lyson's uh, really built up with all the the things. Uh, D six for the bardic, right? Yeah, that's correct. Yes. And a D4 for the guidance. I'm going to dim my... 21 perceptions. I rolled a 5. <laughs> the guidance and uh, inspiration really helped there. Mm -hmm. Alright. Uh, Air, make a stealth check for me. Yeah. Twenty-five? Yeah, I think. All right. Yeah, is that all right? It seems, are you uh, kind of just vanishing into the shadows of the canopy? Um, the rest of you kind of charge through, and Lysa leading the way. Uh, at first, it's kind of nothing but forest, and uh, doesn't seem to really be a path until you find a uh, an actual path that kind of seems to veer off to one side of the forest, but leads deeper in, uh, kind of the way you're facing it. And uh, about 10 or 15 minutes continuing along that path, you don't see anything really dangerous or anything, but you see uh, a ways off um, in a clearing, you see what looks to be buildings. How many buildings? From what you can see from the clearings, about two of them. What does the air smell like here? Uh, that perception, uh, it has a... No, most mostly normal like uh, the flora and fauna smell, earth smell, um, but there are just the faintest scent of cooking fires. Oh, people live here. Occupied houses in the middle of the woods. A familiar. Did anyone see where Air disappeared to? I'm sure mm -hmm. she's around. Uh, probably within hearing distance. So. What do you all think? This obviously seems like a trap to me, but it also seems like it might be potentially Fey. And if there's a familiar, there is a magic user, we are looking for magic users. It all seems very fortuitous. Well, can't argue with that logic. I wish However, I was there so bad right now. <laughs> However, you know, last time we... Uh... Last time we it's we were invited into something like this, we died. So you know. I mean, you can understand people as a hamster, and Sharon can currently talk to you. So, uh, she stayed back. I am at 
I'm on the horse. Oh, you stayed at the on the horse. Oh, okay. Yeah, she climbed on the back of Harold. So there is currently somewhere on the roads to Zilspar a horse being ridden by a hamster. (laughs) I'm gonna kind of. No, we're just still in there waiting for you. You see some guy like riding by. It's like, holy shit, John! Look at that! (laughs) What a sight! It's a hamster riding a horse. <laughs> Did that hamster just turn into a fairy? <laughs> oh, it's one of them okay, fake something people. wrong. <laughs> Fuck, it's in this beer we bought. Shit. <laughs> that moonshine was Those must wrong. have been the bad mushrooms from the forest. <laughs> <laughs> well, they call it the purple pixie for a reason. <laughs> now I need these guys' story. <laughs> I need a sight. <laughs> it's canon now. It happened. You have to meet them at a later date. <laughs> yeah, then how we all just collectively were like, we are the DM now. <laughs> Look at me. I am the DM now. <laughs> Sometimes I say what comes to my head, okay? I'm sorry for uh, just yeah, completely yanking that. this out of context. ADHD but sometimes, I, man. I I'm going to fly down and just kind of, like, whisper. <clears throat> um, God, so they still can't days. see me. Um, but I'm just going to be like, I'm going to go check it out. Hey, right here. And I'm going to... Uh, I could sneak. almost swear that I heard a voice in the wind say if they would look for us. Let's just... Relax. I've got sneaky sneak my way over. Okay. You kind of zip through the through the canopy and you uh, come to the edge uh, and look out in the clearing and it is looks to be a small what it could barely count as a village. Um, there is about Total about eleven houses in this small wooded clearing. Can I like circle around it, staying in the trees, just to like see what I can see? Mm-hmm. Um, the houses all seem to be mostly uh, thatched roofs, and um, there's some fencing around the edge of the town. Uh, it's simple wooden fencing, not necessarily it's to keep necessarily anything out. Um, and uh, some of the houses have small little gardens that have uh, a plethora of little plants and um, nothing too big. Maybe just like a few rows of cabbages and carrots and things like that. Um, as you're passing around, you don't see anyone. Um, until you get around past a few of the buildings and you see in the center of town is a small well and sitting against it is a person with their arm over their stomach and their head lulled forward and you, they're just sitting leaned up against the, the well. And, okay. Um... Hmm. I think I will take out my bow. I'm not going to try to shoot them, but I'm going to try to shoot next to them in their general vicinity to see if they react or if they're alive. Is the ground next to it? Doesn't seem to react at all. Hmm. It doesn't bode well. I, I'll make my way like all the way around the town. Um, I got another perception check. Okay. That die did me dirty, so I'll do this one. Perception. Oh, nice. Uh, that's a 21. 21? Um, yeah, you don't see anyone else in the town. Seems completely abandoned. You kind of look in some of the, um, the makeshift windows in some of the houses seems all dark um, hmm. there is a very small stream of um very faint smoke coming out of one of the houses
thousands, but it looks to be, if anything, the last dying embers of a fire that might have been in there. Okay, so then I'll just like circle my way all the way back around and then um, go back to everyone. All right. I just want to like pop out thin air. <laughs> <There's a shiny laughs> <laughs> um, so the town uh, went and checked it out. Uh, there was only one person there, and I believe they are dead. Not a hundred percent sure because I wasn't sure if it's like a trap or something. But I did shoot near them, and they didn't react. So not looking good there. There's about eleven houses. Um, so I don't know what we want to do with that information. Maybe raid the houses. We take our break. We can if we need to. Why do you really, really have to pee? Hmm. All right. If you guys right. decide what you want to do about this village, we'll take a break. Come back in about fifteen minutes, so we'll be back. Let's take a moment to think about that air. Ah. <laughs> yeah, great idea. I love to stop and think. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite thing to do. <laughs> All right, 15 minutes. See you later. Later. See you in a bit, chat. Oh boy.
Hello, chat. How you doing? Anybody to talk to? So, we ordered from a Vietnamese place earlier, and one of the options was Vietnamese chicken nuggets, and like, I was super curious, how is Vietnamese chicken nuggets different? Hey, load last save. And like, so we got them. Nice and delicious. They turn out pretty good. They've got a distinctly Vietnamese flavor. As you as you are some sort of expert on Vietnamese food now. <laughs> uh, kind of an expert. Not well. No, not an expert at no. all. Not an expert at all. <laughs> but it's got a distinct flavor that I associate with the Vietnamese food I've had so far. Yeah, kind of the sweeter, savorier kind of thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's pretty good. I needed some soup to try to help my uh, mouth. It's not helping. Mm. Just not feeling that good. Nug and I both got our uh, second COVID shots today, and my left arm is killing me. I went to reach for something earlier, and if you were watching my face at the time, I actually spasmed and made a face. It hurt a lot. Mm -hmm. And ever since then, it's just like, my left arm doesn't want to be used. Yeah, I understand completely. I'm not really into moving right now either. Mm -hmm. On the bright side, two weeks and we can uh, be yep. uh, completely... Safe. It was actually like 10 days, they said. So, a little bit less than two weeks. Which is good. Hmm. How are you doing, load last save? I got a headache. <laughs> if only we could do that in this game. If we could, we wouldn't be where we are. Nice. Nice. I hope you enjoy it, man. It's real fun when playing. <laughs> we tend to play like... Well, me and Brian tend to play more, somewhat more cautious characters. And then there's Air. lid. Oh well, I have a replacement right here. I don't know if Kel's cautious, he's just kinda... You know what I just noticed? None of the, uh... When he's juxtaposed against air, there's just, there's a night and day difference, though, so... None of the Nightbot stuff has shown up. I guess he just appear cautious. Hmm. Okay, let's see if that kick starts it. Yep, Eberron. Um, 
We're basically playing a uh, homebrew Eberron campaign. Since Tritons don't technically exist as a race in uh, the Eberron setting. I basically created not the entire um, society, but the way Shior and City at the very least, wor least works. The more I eat this, the better it is. Holy crap. <laughs> I guess you really like those then, huh? Yeah. Like, at first I wasn't certain if I was going to like it. But, like, the more I eat it, the better. Definitely the better. It's good. Mm-hmm. Are those the interesting chicken nuggets? Yep. I can't remember what they were called, but... Vietnamese chicken nuggets. That's what they called them. Mm-hmm. How are they different than normal chicken nuggets? Um, have you ever had Vietnamese food? I don't know. Okay, so there's a, like, a distinct, like, flavor that Vietnamese food tends to have. Kind of heavy on cilantro. Yeah, something like that, yeah. And they somehow managed to make that flavor in the actual chicken nugget. Nice. So if you like that flavor, <laughs> it's great. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna read you because I gotta eat. That said, the Vietnamese fries are just normal fries. I'm just I'm just disappointed that there's not that it's not French fried. I would have been very interested to see how they did that. You just wanted the, them to send us an entire French person who was fried? Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, I've been happy with a French person not fried. You know. <laughs> you never know. Caleb might have been French. The guy I've who been. delivered. Yeah. And he could have... uh. Could have been German, too. I was going to say he could have been uh, smoking weed. Probably. <laughs> then he would be French fried. I think I'm done. You're done? Yeah. Was that bad, that bad, uh, that joke that bad? Yep, that was, that was really <laughs> bad. <laughs> I have found my coin. Hooray! Nice. It went behind my dice jar. I don't know how. Maybe you placed it on top of the jar and it fell off? It's possible it fell over last night. There was a bunch of stuff falling last night. You have an earthquake? No, I just place things really precariously. Ah. I would, uh, you know, have a rough, I would have a rough where you want it to be, and it's not always the best place for it. Oh, yeah, I do that all the time. I would have a rough time at your place. Like, when things, uh, oh, you Brian, absolutely would. This is chaos incarnate. Brian can contest, like, when he places stuff precariously on the edge, I just, like, push it forward. <laughs> I'm really bad about that. Mm hmm. I've tripped over his shoes a few times. Placed it precariously on the precipice. <clears throat> mm. Well, that was actually a pretty good meal. Yep.
Um, so... I am playing a Triton Druid, three levels in Druid and fi uh, two levels in Fighter. That's all I'm going to do with Fighter, though. I'm going Druid the rest of the way. Um, we're all level five. Let me see the campaign. Yeah, we're character level five, although some of us have multiclassed. I believe yeah. currently only myself and maybe the Sorcerer are pure classes. I think... I think uh, Violet's also pure class still. Yep, I am a um, cleric and bard mix. If you want to watch us from the beginning where all the real chaos started, we do have a uh, <clears throat> YouTube uh, channel archive. I've been considering up I've been considering uploading my uh, my video game playthroughs, but I'm like, nah, that's already for D and D. Have uh, seven sessions up on there, and this one will probably be up around Monday-ish because I'm lazy and I take a long time to upload them. Please consider subscribing. Please consider. We would appreciate it. And uh, I said it in chat uh, text earlier so that I didn't disturb the the uh, stream. But thank you for the follow, Hollow Mirage, and Load Last Save. Oh, there's one thing I forgot to do. As for myself, I am a ranger of the Fey Wanderer uh, Conclave. Oop, that's the wrong one. Nope. This isn't your first life. No, nope, no, nope, I don't need that. Looks like it's not up. I've been doing Thank some uh, small stream connect stuff on uh, Twitter. Just a just a tiny bit. I'm not even certain if it's working. And hopefully that's gotten something going. Also, I need to double check that. Yeah, okay. So, we have Air, who is a uh, fairy. And she is... Specifically an Aurora fairy. Yeah, an Aurora yeah, I'm an Aurora fairy. fairy, and I'm a rogue bard currently with plans to multi-class again into Warlock. <laughs> Three rogue, two bard. Um, we just open up. Wait, the... you're a rogue? No. <laughs> no, not a, not at all. Kaelin uh, is a level five bard cleric, cleric bard. I don't know why Bard is first. Alphabetical. I guess that makes sense. Um, I did the same thing for Air on this page, too. Uh, Lyslin is a ranger. Merrick is a uh, sorcerer. Phoenix sorcery. And Violet is a second druid, but she's more... She's a pure druid right now. Circle of Flowers. Also a fairy. Oh yeah, I'm a swashbuckler. Yeah. Uh, yeah. but nothing. I'm, I don't have a bard thing yet. And I am everyone else, <laughs> <laughs> including Merrick on the weeks he's not here. Exactly. Yeah. We have, a, um, we have another ally that is with us, but uh, he can only be here every other week due to scheduling stuff. And um, but he is a fire genasi 
sorcerer the phoenix origin yeah air is 90 percent of the chaos in this uh group that is I a lie always am violet is a good true. portion of that mm -hmm. I, I was gonna say supposed to be i was gonna say violet is five percent <laughs> I'd but, say more 20. Yeah, you're right. After the last couple seasons, sh uh, sessions. Yeah, 20. She was not supposed to be so chaotic, but she is playing that way now. <laughs> Air 60, 20 for uh, Violet, and 10% for the rest of us. I mean, that's fair. That's I'm just a guy who says funny things, really. That is true. <laughs> I'm um, literally the comic relief works out. At least maybe I don't know. Ninety percent of the time is me not knowing what to say, so I just say mm -hmm. things that make sense. I'm gonna change the timer for that for the. Uh... You you said that in like four or five straight uh, things about something you did with first with the hydrated and then you did that again with the hydrate. Now you're doing it with the arch out or something. Yeah, because, like, I'm looking at it and it's just spamming the chat. <laughs> since uh, Load Last Save posted twice, so, uh, since it last posted, it's posting it again. <clears throat> and, like, we don't get enough uh We don't get enough um, traffic to have them have it spamming like that. So mm -hmm. I'm going to go with, like, 30 minutes for the Discord and Art and 15 for Hydrate. Does that sound about right? Probably 30 for all of them. I'd say 30 for all. Honestly. Okay. Now that said, it will all pop up at almost the exact same time. Because apparently it does that based on the clock. So at 2.30, 3.30, so on. Yeah, that's fine. I could also leave it at 10 minutes and just change the number of lines that need to be posted. All right, 30. All right, there. Now it won't drown uh, a little less save out. <clears throat> Uh, is that everything? We're still waiting on uh, V, aren't we? Yeah. Oh, oh, another thing, if you want to check it out, is we have a um, Twitter account, not uh, at not provost, where um, Tori will post any interesting and funny quotes that we make. I do that, yes. As best as I can. <laughs> Sometimes I miss some because I'm laughing. And then I forget <laughs> what we said. <laughs> yeah. Makes but sense. I try my best. <laughs> Anything Hello, priceless we've gotten this week? Uh, I don't have the Twitter pulled up. Let's see. <laughs> What have I tweeted? <laughs> uh, my favorite one is, I don't want you to think I'm racist by offering an apple. <laughs> <laughs> That's my personal favorite. I've only tweeted three things, but that one's my favorite. I don't, I don't want you to think I'm racist because I asked you if you wanted an apple. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, I was asking yeah, a good one. Yeah. <clears throat> You gotta All be right. careful with that kind of thing, you know. My my all time favorite quote is still the the. No offense, but would it be racist to ask you if you eat fish? Why would that be racist? No reason. Yeah. I love how we call back to no. that today. Uh -huh. <laughs> so. Right, Eric comes just... back, explains the situation. What would you guys like to do? I can't really tell if it's a trap or not. When you can't tell, it's most likely a trap. I guess that makes sense. I'm sure it is, and I'm sure it's fine. 
I, I say let's just raise the entire village to the ground, burn it to the ground, and, you know, call it a day. I mean, we could, like, see if there's anything there first, maybe. I don't Is know that part of our uh, but... religious teachings? I still haven't gotten that template to read. Sorry. It depends on the religion you follow, and some of them, uh, in some way, shape, or form, always end up there for some reason. So. Did you ever find out what was in that one house? <laughs> Wait, which house? He said there was one that had uh, lights, uh, heat coming from it. Oh, was it was like the smoke. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I didn't, I didn't see anything. But I mean, we could check it out. I mean, yeah, let's go ahead and see if we could check it out. But you know, be prepared to split. You know. Hmm. By split, I mean split away from the town, not split from each other. We know how that went. <laughs> <laughs> All random directions into the forest, baby. <laughs> <laughs> that reminds me, I've got trip. a couple of hundred feet of string. Uh, little one, would it be okay to tie you to something? <laughs> <laughs> no. I just zip <sighs> straight up. I think you that's just... a definitive <laughs> no. answer. Yeah, I'm just like, no, as I fly up. <laughs> Wait, before you go, you didn't feel any magical pull telling you to stay there, right? Who knows? <laughs> I didn't go oh, in the town. Fine. Oh yeah, it's perfectly safe. Nothing wrong. There's, you know, there's only a dead guy in the middle of the town, apparently. You know. Well, I mean, oh. that's not entirely. She said there was a well next uh, that he was on, so I mean, Maybe poisoning he drank a water some source. bad water. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta While be careful. they are like doing this and I'm back with the horse. Can hamsters talk to horses? Technically <laughs> horses and hamsters don't have a language but you can have an animal conversation as best you can. Yeah, sure. Squeak, uh, squeak. Nay. Nay. <laughs> <laughs> Animals have a universal just, language, right? That's just a thing, right? Yeah, just, yeah, we are team dogs and cats talk, talk to right? each other, yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so... I just want to like sit on Harold's back and be like, "So, Harold, do you like tea?" Looks back. What is tea? Um, water, hot, leaves. Pantomiming this. <laughs> 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 As a hamster, squeak, 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 squeak. Welcome to our stream where we squeak at each other. Um, the squeaky, squeak, squeaker, squeak. I could have gone off into like this David Attenborough thing, but I'm not going to. The horse turns around and says, "That doesn't sound good. Hot water usually doesn't taste very good." It's it's actually really good. I'll make you some later. We'll make you tea. And you can Scout. try tea. Scout kind of slaps around a little bit as he whaps away some flies. <laughs> Does it taste anything like apples? Uh, it could. It kind of depends on what tea. But we could we could make it. Can you put sugar in it? Yeah. Honey. What's honey? Bee poop. <laughs> Those stinging things? They suck. Uh yes, but the the poop is really sweet. <laughs> <laughs> <It's> kind of like a look. <laughs> I think, I think you're about to get inside checked by a horse. <laughs> <laughs> and as and as Harold starts asking Violet about why she knows what poop tastes like, we'll go back to the other people. And, <laughs> and the you guys heading towards the village. All right. So before we go in, does everyone have a harpoon that wants one this time? I Last time only it. Kale had one, and I could take one. Great. Merrick Harpoon, uh, you might not be 
I'm right. good. <laughs> Air! <laughs> Harpoon! <laughs> it's a bit big for me, bro. <laughs> I believe in you. I believe in you too. <laughs> I like, Here, catch! I inspire her. Two foot tall. <laughs> two foot tall. <laughs> and like three inches. <laughs> I have this harpoon made for a human. No. <laughs> I just let him fall back to the ground. The, uh, the is head, head into the town. Yeah. The little village. Mm -hmm. right. yeah. You head in, uh, cautiously looking around. It's very quiet. You hear animal noises around. Um, but the place looks abandoned. You don't hear the sounds. What kind of animal noises? Around. You hear some birds. Um, see a few squirrels kind of scamper around in the trees. Um, the houses, from what you can see from the outsides, are empty. Um, mostly dark, though, so you can't see too much. Do you go into any of the buildings, or do you go towards the center of the well? I'll go towards the building with the fire that was going down. It's one of the I'm larger sure buildings. The dead guy, um, possibly dead guy. Um, the building you go to here is one of the larger buildings. It's got a kind of a more sturdy foundation. Looks like probably more, um, uh, or I guess thoroughly built than the other houses. Um, and the but the carvings and whatnot along the uh, the door and the framing around the door are very intricate and they're painted uh, these bright colors with these flowers and um, things like that. And it's got these very intricate designs all around it. And the door itself. Uh, has a depiction of a um, of a woman cloaked uh, in kind of a white shawl um, face. It doesn't have a lot of features to it, um, and she is holding something in her hand that is uh, that is shown in the painting to be kind of like bright and glowing. Okay. I will open the door. There's no lock on it whatsoever. Just... You look inside, and the place is tossed. The, um, there's a, what was probably a bookshelf has been pushed over onto its side. It's blocking, actually, partially the entrance in. And if you're small enough, you can go under or over it. Um, and the rest of the house looks completely trashed. Uh, cloth on the table is ripped up. There is uh, books splayed everywhere. There are um, chairs overturned, and some of them are broken. Um, and it looks like whatever was in here, whatever happened in here, was quite a struggle. Um, and you see a fireplace. Off to does one it look side. like a struggle, or does it look like they were ransacking, like to look for something? Can I tell? Make an insight check. Okay. <clears throat> insight. 19. It looks like there was some sort of struggle here. Physical struggle. Um, and uh, you notice the fireplace off to the side, and it does have kind of like a just a pile of ashes and embers that are just has a very thin line of smoke coming up from it. Okay. Uh, Lysland, when you get over to the body, um, it is hard to tell its features as it does have a um, kind of a larger, kind of a, a hat on that kind of covers its wide um, brim that kind of um, hangs down over the face. You can't quite see the facial features. Uh, but as you get closer, you can definitely tell that this person is severely injured. Um, um, and you notice quite quickly that they're not breathing. I'm um, going with, them, with him. Yeah, so was I. The person is leaning against the uh, the well. Has his arm over uh, over his stomach, where there is a large wound uh, cut into it, and you can. Uh, it looks like a large blade did it. Um, and he is literally his arm is just 
feebly holding in whatever guts he had left. Um, and he's not moving. Can I make a medicine check? Sure, what for? Um, basically to see if he is... I guess we can determine that he's dead, right? It's up to you. I would will, I will like to just check for a pulse. Sure. <sighs> so reach down gently. Would it be survival or perception to look for a blood trail? Probably well, that's a perception. natural one. <laughs> um, Kale, if you, you kind of reach down, put your finger to his neck. Nice one, pulse. 17. No pulse. 17. Uh, you don't see a blood trail anywhere. You see most where his blood is, is kind of pooled around underneath him. Um, and then smeared along the well itself. I uh, pull the body off of the uh, side of the well. And um, as you do, the head kind of pulls backwards as yeah. you pull it away. And it looks to be a... Um, a man in his probably late 40s um, has jet black hair and uh, kind of a, a, a kind of a stubble beard, um, pockmarked face a little bit, mm -hmm. um, but is pale white, has completely bled out, and mm -hmm. uh, just eyes staring, um, I, mouth uh, comes open. I lay him on the ground, cross his arms, and uh, close his eyes. Um, you notice that as a practitioner himself and people you've seen before, uh, you can definitely tell that this person has the accoutrement um, of a caster of some sort. He has a, he has a component pouch on his side that you recognize. Once, I, once I'm done with that, I uh, say a quick prayer to my god. And then I take a look at the uh, component pouch. Right. And I also check to see if there's anything else on his body as well. <laughs> Make a perception check for me. Perception? Gotcha. That is a uh, 21. 21. Yeah. Um, you open up the component pouch, and it has the general things com spell component pouches have. Uh, you also sift through a little bit. You do find a book um, on his person. Um, that it is partially damaged by what it looks like whatever killed him uh, slashed a part of the book. It's mm -hmm. it's you can, it's like kind of like hanging off to like one one corner of it's kind of hanging off. Um, so you I mean you could try to salvage it if you'd like if you found a way to do that. Um, and then he also has a um, a backpack on him that has a whatever equivalent of an explorer's pack would be, okay. um, and. Uh, the, he has a pouch of uh, 20 gold on his person. Well, we know the, the motive wasn't robbery. Uh, you also find inside the pack as well um, a number of incense sticks and some charcoal. Okay, I, I grab one of the uh, incense sticks and uh, uh, stick it in the ground above his head and light it. Alright. Do you think... Okay, so... Oh, never mind. You go first. Do you think the familiar was trying to get our attention to help him? I think, I think so, yeah. I mean... He's got this component pouch here. I think he might have been... How old does this body look? Uh, he looks pretty freshly dead. Question is, you know, if he... Can I... Can, can I surmise, looking at the wound, just a time frame of how long it would take for someone to seek uh, treatment for that before they bleed out? Uh, give me a medicine check. Go on to family now. That is a natural 17. So that uh, goes to a 20. Soft 20. 
you take a look at the wound and it is a deep jagged gash that has ripped him from uh, side to side and you can tell that he probably maybe survived a few minutes okay. like that before he was completely done okay hey uh can we look for like footprints or anything nearby uh Lyslin? you might be better at that certainly uh guidance <laughs> at the very least there's no blood so well, yeah whoever killed him had to have killed him here so yeah exactly sense. what are you guys gonna do that air what are you what else are you doing in the house okay so i in this house specifically i want to look um to see if it looks like i know there was a struggle but i want to see if it looks like there was anything taken like if i can kind of retrace where things were also sure. if there's just like like a place this person would hide. I want to check for hiding people. Make an investigation check. All right. Uh, if we're doing perception, that would be a 25. If it is survival, that would be a 22. Okay. Survival. Investigation. That's an 18. I also just, like, want to go through all the houses and do this. So. Well, this first house, um, you look through and you kind of gauge at... You look around and you actually do find a, um, a small box that has a intricate lid that has been pushed over and uh, upside down on the ground. And you kind of lift it up and look underneath it and it actually has a few uh, very well-made pieces of jewelry. Um, so whoever did this, if they were intending on taking anything, either was blind I wasn't taking things. It's been a robbery. <laughs> then they may have been taking people. Could be. Yeah. So I'll just is the box pretty? I'll just take the yeah. box. Is... You're gonna leave the leave the jewelry behind? No, no, I'm gonna Okay. Yeah. Uh it's about for your reference and your in your item stuff, it's about forty gold worth of jewelry. Is there okay. I find someone, I'll give it back, but... The box itself, if you find the right seller, it could probably get you uh, five gold. Is there it's... any other bodies? I'm sorry, you, you still have more to say. Yeah, I was just saying, it's not like, itself is not made of, like, wealthy, or, like, uh, good, like, um, rare material, but it is handmade, so it's well made itself. Um, and your question of the bodies, you're in, you do not see any other bodies. Uh, uh, Lyslin with your survival check you kind of do a little bit of a kind of a circular perimeter uh, going out from the uh, well and you notice you've noticed footprints throughout that this place seemed to have been traveled uh, somewhat recently um, but the newest footprints you get you can find say for you guys' own uh, is one set of footprints that leads to the well and doesn't lead away. And also around around the houses, you also do notice a number of uh, unique footprints uh, in the shape of Aklut footprints. Aklut? It's the... That is strange. They, um... Shioran, do the sea wolves typically come far away from shore? I would assume no, but double check with the DM. Um, from your knowledge from what you rolled before about uh, Alkluts, they... I mean, they can, they can come on land, but they're mostly sea creatures. Um, you also notice an odd thing that as you kind of look around, you don't notice the footprints coming into the village. You can't find a source of where they came from, but you see that they were in the town somehow and then left. You see the footprints leading out and heading south. No, that's very unusual. They can come on land, but most of their food is in the water, so I don't think they would... Go on land, uh, go this far in land. Also, I don't see them 
any footprints saying they arrive. They just suddenly appear and leave. That was more Lifelines. Um, oh, you, you said survival. that. Okay. Yeah, no, you're Sorry. Good. Then I didn't say that last part. So, they appeared, they didn't leave. Uh, Kale, how dead, recently dead, did you say that man probably would have been? Probably within the past few hours if his body's still warm. Alright, so it definitely wasn't our... It's because we, of course, killed them yeah. a day ago. Now, Looks that is be. also troubling, because that means that's not our Aklutes, and apparently these ones are uh, able to fly, because why else would they leave no prints other than when circling the village? Do see will fly? Not that I know of. You do see the tracks. You do see the tracks leaving the village. You just don't see where they came into the village. Are they? Maybe they. Are they? Can I? Can I just say something? Either is it possible they're dropped in, or they were they summoned? Maybe. Are there any cart tracks in the area? No. Village seems to be pretty self-sufficient. Don't know. Well, what worries me is the fact that this is the only person here. Why do they leave him here? He was already dead. There's no use for a dead man in experiments. Yeah. I feel like some people might need help. People always need help. Whether you can get to them or not. That, That is what decides whether you're able to. Right now, we have no tracks as to where they might be going, other than south following we might, the Steve Wolf tracks. We might need to track track that down. I, I, I don't... I, A, hate leaving a job undone, you know? Also, the last time I checked, um, familiars normally died with their caster, so I don't think that cat was his. Of course, it could be different in your world. That's just how it was in my world. I'm not a wizard, with, I don't know. <laughs> with my role, would I know anything about that? I believe it was 17. Not sure. Magic's yeah. a fickle thing. Mm. There's rules, but it's also plenty of things that... The rules the are more like guidelines. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't know a lot of people who had familiar, well, so... Well, I'm, not, I'm no detective, right? But I could surmise that is it possible that that you know since there's one caster here maybe there was more than one right and maybe one of those familiars was kind of a emergency and cast it out before they were taken that's a possibility isn't it it's entirely possible so i'm not thinking know, it i might could, have it could be a, it that. Could could be a cry for help anyone that's uh going away but the problem is Black cats in the Feywild, if there are black cats, they're going to grow up to be displacer beasts. It's better to kill them when they're kittens. I'll keep that in mind and if I ever run into a black cat in the Feywild. Shh. But here it's a little bit different. Should we get Violet? I'm so lucky Violet's not there right now listening to that conversation. <laughs> um, as that conversation is happening, Violet, you're, you've been sitting there with Harold for a while. Um, yeah. You can continue to stay there. Yeah, I'm just kidding. I'm just chilling. I, and also, I'd just like to point out that now I've started singing, and I'm like, um, around the corner and up a tree, Sergeant Major said to me, oh, "Won't you marry me? I'd really like to go. I'd really like to know, cause every time I look at your face, it makes me want to go around the corner and up a tree, Sergeant Major." And then I keep going, and then eventually Harold is like, "Do you know any other fucking songs?" And I'm like. <laughs> yes. <gasps> this is the song that never ends. It goes on and on, on my friend. Some people started singing it, not knowing what it was, and now they'll keep on singing it forever just because it's a song that never ends. <laughs> Harold, like, we're gonna, moves, we're his gonna... Head, moves his head back and nips at you. 
Oh. Oh. <laughs> Come and find that Violet's dead and Harold killed her. <laughs> He's actually a, a really high level spellcaster. <laughs> Turns out it's his, uh, his familiar. Yeah, he's, he was this high-level wizard this entire time. He had cast, like, true polymorph on himself or something. You know. guys need to stop giving the DM ideas. <laughs> he's he's a really high-level druid who's just... It's true. None of us incited Harold. We just took him at face value. <laughs> we did. Never <laughs> underestimate the horse. All right, so... Um, Air, uh, you yes. wanted to go investigate other houses. I want to investigate them all, yeah. So, Eric comes out of the big house and uh, go to the closest house, which is a um, kind of a, a, a red house, a red roofed house over just slightly across the street. Um, go inside, and um, it looks similar, just a little less. Like, it looks like there was a, a rush out of here, less of an attack here, and more of people rushing to leave um, as the tables are overturned and the door is left hanging open, um, and yeah. But again, it doesn't seem like anything was taken. Um, I'm gonna look for hidey holes, places people could be, you know. Investigation check. Alright. That's a 10. You don't find anything. Um, Anything hidey holy or anything like that. Um, looks like a family of maybe three lived here. Then I will move on to the next place. You guys see air kind of zip out of one house, go to another one, comes out a couple of minutes later, goes to another one. What are you guys doing out by the well still? Okay, so we've really got um, options if we want to follow this. I can move faster than all of you. This has been established. I can follow the track south. I have a whistle. You can hear me, hopefully, if this is as good as uh, other ones they had back where I come from. Hopefully about 300 or so feet. Uh, if I'm louder, you might be able to hear louder. So, I can chase. You can go back to the cart. Hopefully hear a whistle sound. Make a, um... Make a wisdom check lesson. Sure thing. Six. Continue. <laughs> well, I think we should grab Violet first. And then yeah. head on. Uh, then we can decide from there. Can you stay hidden if you are... Uh... If you do the tracking? I am more at home in forests than I am in the open plains. I would hope that I can be discreet while moving through them. I never had a problem ambushing people that were worth ambushing. Well, if you still want to do that, don't, uh, don't risk anything. I'll go ahead and go grab uh, Violet, and we can follow once we're uh, together. So, Lyslin, you head out to follow the tracks? Yeah, I go ahead and follow the tracks. Make your survival check for me. Ah, I see. This is a traitor die. Uh, that is a mighty 11. Um, you start tracking into the forest, and we'll get to what you find in a moment. Uh, what were you going to do, Shior? I'm going to uh, wild shape into a blue horse and run through the forest to uh, get to Violet and get her attention. Um, Kale, what are you doing while the other two, well, uh, Lyslin and Shior head off? I guess I'm going to uh, do the proper cleric thing, which is uh, tend to the body, and I guess try to bury bury him in some sort of like shallow grave or something. Yes. 
I'm pretty sure I there's a shovel in I would the like town. to add, uh, you would have seen a shovel on the wagon that uh, Lysland had basically yeah, extorted from the village. There's probably that also violent. one. Yeah, there's also probably one in the town, too, so I've looked there first, legitimately. Um, make a perception check, Kip. That is a 17. 17. Uh, yeah, you easily find a shovel, and on your way back, as you're kind of looking at the body, you kind of glance up a little bit towards the, the blood stain that is by the well, and you see the wound on him, and it's a large wound. And you look at the blood stain that's at the well, and there's plenty on the on kind of near the back where he was kind of leaning against. But there's not a lot off the ground. Hmm. There's a small puddle near, like, the back of where he was sitting. But you'd think if he bled out there, there would have been a lot more uh, spread yeah. out around the ground. Yeah. yeah. I keep that in mind. I don't know if, the, if I don't think that there was like, <sighs> hmm. Um, while Cal is mulling over that, um, Eric, you move to the next house, um, make an investigation check. I should remember what my investigation plus is by now, but I don't. <laughs> okay, so that's a fifteen. Um, this one, you, uh, again, this is kind of a, um, this, you actually find blood in this, uh, one, this house. Uh, the attack happened here pretty brutally, it looks like, but again, no bodies, just blood and place torn apart. Uh, you do find a journal, though. I will pick that up. Does it look like enough blood for the person to have died? Like, is it that much blood or is it just a little bit? Uh, from what you see, it looks like the um, uh, there was a spray of blood, and then there was a large amount of it dragged towards the front of the house and dragged out of the front, um, and then from there, there's a bit of a bit of like a, a dark spot near the front uh, of the front of the house. That's probably where the majority of the blood was. Mm, so someone died, most likely, but there's no body. Okay. Um, and the journal the journal itself is an old leather journal, handmade, um, with what looks to be like handmade paper as well inside of it. Um, and it is in common. And it seems to be, uh, as you kind of start at the first couple of dates, it goes back uh, at its earliest date two years ago. Um, and it talks about how the journal was a gift from um, this person's father and that um, they wanted to keep this for the strange dreams they were having and for to keep uh, to make it a, a routine to keep things in check um, and it goes through kind of like sifting through as it's it's pretty dense the person writing writing out their feelings and writing about interactions with people around the village and um, things like that but then they start talking about dreams that they're having of uh, blood and violence and uh, death and things that Damn, scare sounds them. Sounds like my dreams. <laughs> my personal ones, not heirs. <laughs> uh, and it, it's... Scary. They they talk about how the their, their father doesn't want them to tell the other people in the village because then they might think that there's something wrong with him. And so they can keep it to themselves, they keep the journal and they also, as you're kind of sifting through, you notice that one of the dates that it actually talks about um, him hearing noises from the well. Um, like someone was crying. And when he asked his father about it, he was told immediately and vehemently to never go over to the well and, and never oh, question that oh, again. Oh, I'm digging over there, shit. <laughs> Yeah, oh god! You immediately stop stop looking at the houses. I'm going over to the fucking well, bro. We left these two alone. <laughs> so as uh, 
It takes you a little bit to get to that point in the journal as you zip out of the house and go towards Kale. At this point, Shior and you are getting back to uh, Violet and uh, Harold. And so, Violet, you see a blue horse <laughs> out of the woods. And I'm going to just... As you come up, you can just hear... <laughs> you still a hamster? As... No, I'm swinging my oh. feet now. I'm a fairy. <clears throat> I'm going. <laughs> I'm going to skid to a halt and do that uh, horse thing where it's like the head, like trying to get uh, Violet. Uh... I have her attention, right? Yeah, she's looking at you. So I'm basically like throwing my um, head over my shoulder. Or back, you know, the way horses do. Harold! Man the fort. I'm relying on you! You lost Lyslin. Good luck. And then I, uh, I will go, uh, and accompany Shiorin back. Um, as you guys are heading back towards the, uh, the forest, mm -hmm. uh, Lyslin, you are following the tracks out, and you realize as you're traveling, as you, uh, lose track of them pretty quickly into the woods, and you realize that there's been enough shifting of the undergrowth and um, dirt being moved by either wind or the rain or uh, other animals that these tracks are probably a good couple of weeks old. Hit the wrong button for text to, uh, for push to talk. Um, okay. He kind of looks at, thinks to himself, okay, that's, that's on you. That's a little embarrassing. He'll, uh, double back towards the village, hopefully being faster. Uh, yeah, you, you, you catch this before Shorin's, um, at, uh, violent moment, so you would get back before them, like, about just a few minutes. Okay, um, so, a little embarrassing. Those are olden tracks, very olden tracks. So, I guess if they're not what led out of this town with all these people, if this guy just died, then, you know, whatever is there is still here. And I, I also noticed something, too. Maybe you can kind of give me some insight on this, but you see his wound, and I just point at it with the shovel, as air is zipping out towards the well. Yeah, and here's the thing. I was already going to go down the well. Like, I had already planned that after I go to the house. Like, I was already planning yeah. on going down. But now I'm like, okay, got to speed up the timeline. I'll check the houses later. <laughs> um, you, uh, you just zip out and then down the well? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> um, and you get down the... Oh, no. you see, you see, so you guys see... <laughs> I was already planning on okay, doing so it. Okay, so would I see air and would I be able to, I don't know, attack of opportunity with a net, the net that I've got? Nope, because you're seeing Damn, this okay. as you're coming in the village. Like, you, you're coming okay, back yeah. into the well and you come and see Kale just like, what the fuck? Uh, as <laughs> air, you get down about 15 feet and then you see water. Are you going to continue? Uh, yeah. Okay. Just kind of into the water and uh you make a make a perception check for me okay a disadvantage this is your uh territory now it is but i'm going for it <laughs> oh it's actually i rolled well on both okay what's my perception uh that's a 18 18 uh you realize at just the last second that this well is not as deep as you thought it was you hit the water and you realize real quick as you 
brace yourself and you hit the water is maybe a foot and a half deep. Oh. This is a okay, very, so... very shallow well. So I, okay, so it's not even covering my head. Nope. <laughs> I guess All it's right. not. Um, no diving in the shallow end, people. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm just going to sit here for a minute. <laughs> All right. Um, See if anything happens. Did, did the bird just commit suicide? Uh, <laughs> again. Air? What's up, bro? <laughs> what are you doing down there? Just checking things out. Oh, uh, okay. I, okay. Well, as I, as I was saying, it looks like this guy, <laughs> if you see from the blood stains here, you know, just, they don't seem consistent with the wound he got. So it's like, so where did he get hit from? You think that if he got stabbed by something and pulled out, it would have been like all over the place, but no. You know, again, that's on me. I thought it looked like enough blood when I checked it out, but, um... I need to go hunting. thought Jeez. it looked like enough blood. <laughs> I mean, granted, you know, I, I understand that, you know, I don't so, know how limited your exposure to hum humans are, but maybe, you know, that, but as, as a person who is at least half human, I think that this is not enough blood. So, like, well, why, gonna where do you take out his knife and just kind of, like, prod the corpse a little with it? seems to be flush. All right, great. Can so I that's one mystery done. It's not, um, not, not a man. Can I, uh, check to see where the entrance and the exit was? Because you know how a lot of puncture wounds have... it wasn't, a, wasn't a puncture wound. It was a slash. Oh, it was a slash. Like, side to side. Like, his entire, he's basically bisected across his gut with oh, all of his entrails okay. spilled out. Oh, that's a very different statement. I thought he was just kind of, you know, stabbed. Okay. Would oh, Lysland's, mm, we'll say people's history of, like, glaive-like weapons, would this be kind of similar to that kind of wound? Make a, make a medicine check as you look at the wound a little more carefully. Sure thing. Well, uh, I just want to add, um, I probably had turned my light, uh, like my wings lights back on to search houses, uh, but at the bottom of the swell, I'm going to turn them back off. Okay. And what was your medicine check? Natural one for a total of four. It looks, it looks like some sort of blade, but it's hard to tell what kind. Uh, whatever it was was big, I guess. Um, at this point, as you guys are investigating the wound, uh, Shiorn and Violet would arrive in town. So, Violet, this is your first time seeing the village um, as uh, Shiorn has kind of led the way. And you can see what kind of I've, I've described before. And you see your allies kind of all gathered around this well and a dead body, it seems, with your cousin not in sight. Quick question. All right, good news, bad news. Hang bad on. news. Those Hang tracks on. are very old. Quick question. Uh, was she able to. Uh... To is she able to understand me? She's no longer a hamster, so no. No. All right. Okay, then Lysen says that Shiorn comes to a halt and tilts her head at him, like a little bit confused. Shiorn can understand. Yeah, I know. Okay. I was I was just wondering because if uh, she yeah. could understand me, then I would be telling her what we figured out. Mm, I see. Okay. But when uh, Lys like when we come. Through and Lysland's there, who was supposed to have uh, gone scouting, tilts her head in confusion. Like, stops and tilts her head in confusion. What tracks? Oh, there were um, Seawolf tracks. They went around the village and then to the south. Turns out they're a couple of weeks old. That's on me. Seawolf tracks? You remember the um, things we killed at the beach. Like more of them, or like the ones we killed? I at think the it beach? actually might have been the ones we killed at the beach, considering that. What well, that's interesting, considering we were looking for where they came from anyway. However, this body is uh, 
newer than that, definitely. Okay. So. Oh, and Dare jumped on the well. Yeah. Dare jumped down the well. Of course. <laughs> of course she did. I flip a copper into the well. <laughs> so you, you know those uh the like those images of a horse just putting its head through the uh, window. Yeah. Sharon's gonna do that with the well. <laughs> Put her in. So yeah, you, you lose the you lose the light up above you, Air, as you look up, and there's I, just a blue I want horse it to be head. Dark. Just a blue horse head looking down at you. I want to. Um... Close my eyes and focus on the bump, 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 bump of the book while I'm down here. All right, make bump, it perception bump, bump, check. Bump. Perception. That's an eighteen. Eighteen. Nine. Um, you kind of sit and quiet. You can hear, you can hear your allies talking. You hear Violet show up. You hear um, more of falls you guess and that's Shiorin. Um but you kind of let it fade away. You just kind of feel that almost where you hurt you hear it's just like you're not sure if it's just in your head and you're just saying it because uh, you've been yeah. hearing it all you know, <laughs> I'm hearing it all, all the time. <laughs> okay. Well air is down there I'm just gonna turn around and be like do you wanna you guys wanna see how to summon air? I can do it in like thirty seconds. Are yes, you ready? very much so. I tried this, I tried to offer this, things. That didn't work. This works like every time. Sharon's head comes out, turns towards her, and she uh, does that uh horse snort thing. She's gonna like lean into the well and be like Hey, you're gonna miss the fight! Yeah, I zip up. <laughs> Air comes out, blades. <laughs> really cool looking. And then when he did that, I'm like, God, you're such an asshole every time. There's never a fight. When will I learn? <laughs> I just can't like, miss out on the opportunity. It's so You know rude. that the one time that she actually says it. That there's actually going to be a fight, and you're not going to go there. I don't is think it's true. Is I'll, there I'll anything come. down there? Uh, no, just a, a tiny, tiny bit of water. Mm. Did it taste poison? It doesn't. I did not drink it. It doesn't. And that like must be some time. poison if you drank it, and all of a sudden you get split in half. <laughs> <laughs> That really would be some poison. You know, some parasites are very... Never mind. I'm gonna Tell sigh in my disappointment because there is no fight, and then I will... I will... <laughs> um, grudgingly, like, fly back over and start looking up over the houses again. <laughs> I, I am now very grumpy. <laughs> What'd you find in the houses earlier, Air? Some blood and some signs of fighting and some signs of fleeing. No people, and nothing was stolen, except for what I stole. <laughs> or it didn't and seem what, to be stolen. What did you steal, exactly? I just, like, pull out the jewelry, and I'm like, this! Okay, well... Well done! Like, an idiot would... Only an idiot would leave this behind. <laughs> <laughs> or just someone who wanted people and not things. I get back to burying the body. All right. Kel goes to continue to dig a, a grave for the dead corpse. I'm going to help Air look in the houses. You guys going back to investigating the houses? Mm -hmm. I'm going to help with investigating the houses as well. But I'm going right. to stay a horse as long as I can. All right. Um... It's a little hard for you to fit into any of the houses, unfortunately. Um, but uh, Air and um, Violet, you can make investigation checks. Right. Well, I dropped my uh, 
hard for him if I can't get in. Oh, that one is not good. That is a seven. Not bad, not bad. Dirty 20. All right. Um, what was your assuring? I... Uh... Okay, my investigation isn't as great as I thought. Uh, that's going to be a 13 total. All right. Um, so, Violet, you find in the next house um, a an area in the back, part of the wall, that you kind of like looking around and you realize that there's a bit of a discoloration to part of the wall. And uh, you kind of feel along, kind of press, and part of the wall just kind of hit this... And the wall kind of opens uh, out a little bit. And you look inside. <gasps> secret treasure. Uh, and you look and there is a, a very small little alcove inside. And there is a, what looks to be, as you kind of open it up, there is these small um, uh, luminescent rocks inside that kind of give off this very, a very soft uh, kind of bluish glow that light up this little alcove. Um, and inside seems to be some sort of shrine. Um, inside is a small little altar, and there is a depiction similar to the one that Air found on the door on one of the on the larger house. Um, and there is the um, uh, skull, very small skull, uh, resting on top of the altar. Like human skull? Looks to be. Like baby Oof. small or like Oof. it's Looks small. Different. This shit got dark real quick. I'm gonna lean out the door of the house and be like, Carl, Carl, what? Come <laughs> 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 here. All right, and I. Head I'll keep digging. Thank you. You head in. Last um. one. <laughs> <laughs> You've got the priest. I'm just a hunter. <laughs> That's I didn't debatable. Want you to feel left out. About me being a priest, I mean, you know. Thank you. Uh, you head inside, Kale, and you see the little al alcove with the shrine inside of it. All right, so let's go. Oh, okay. I so I'll like t I want to touch his shoulder and be like, look, I don't know what this is, but you should totally like look at the skull and shit. And I'm gonna cast guidance. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, can I? Do I understand what god or what deity is depicted there? Make make a religion check. Okay. I'm going. That is a twenty-two. You have no idea. Never seen this icon. Is that with or without the guidance? Oh shit! This well, is guidance. a D4, right? Yep. That is a tw now a 26. I rolled 26. a 4. 26. You have no idea. You've oh, never seen boy. this icon Damn. before. Fuck! It's... Damn. God damn it. This this is always the worst. When you when even the cleric doesn't know which deity it is, and with a 26, like I hand, I hand her the sage. <laughs> this might be your area, but I'll try to... Can I, like, so, go and investigate the so, altar and see if there's anything, like, if I could tell at least the alignment of what is going on, maybe? Like, are they fucking this, like, evil? <laughs> uh, I was gonna say, I was gonna say, sometimes a lack of information is information itself. Yeah. Um, but you, uh, from the look of it, it is a very dark, very bloody ritual. Whether this, and you've seen things like this towards gods and towards perceived gods, things that maybe aren't actually deities and maybe they're just things that have influenced mm. people to do dark shit. Um, and so it's not always just about a deity, sometimes it's just about a, a, a higher power of some sort. Um, that has taken influence over people. Maybe this is that, maybe it's not. Uh, okay. You're not sure. The The imagery, though, is of a light bearer of some kind. It is a, a woman in white with a white shawl that 
covers her features and is holding some sort of object that is it's just basically looks like a miniature sun is depicted holding in her hands as it just radiates outwards from uh where she holds it by her chest she's a light bearer and i'm light demand i never heard of this this is interesting Kale starts um, writing stuff down <laughs> yeah basically <laughs> uh also just to be sure i'm going to uh take a block of my incense and put it in my um, sensor and I'm going to light that and just kind of bless the area just to be sure of that. Alright. I'll get the sage out. <laughs> yeah. the, the, the air I also around look... this is very, very corrupted. I also look around to see if there's any like holy text or like text holy text. Like a perception any... check. Okay. Uh, twenty. Twenty. Uh, you don't seem to find any text of holy in origin. You see a few books here and there that are just like stories. Yeah, I'm just looking for like anything that resembles like some sort of like scripture or something. You know. You don't find anything. I will look for witchy shit. Like, ingredients and, like, um, cards, grimoires. Make a, either a perception or investigation. My perception is way better, so we're gonna go with that. Uh, 18. 18. Um, you look around and there is definitely signs of, kind of, uh, that, not quite witchy, but more, since I don't know the, the the fantasy equivalent native type of beliefs towards uh, keeping spirits away and protecting against evil. So not like the wishy sense, but just like totems and things that are kind of around that you could guess would probably be used to protect against evils or spirits of some kind. It's very, it's not, it's not a lot. It's just a sparse here or there. You see something hanging up above the door that could possibly be a totem of some kind. Um, things like that. Uh -huh. And from that, you can tell that the belief systems of whoever lived here was a bit behind civilization at the moment um because you don't really see this type of thing in sharn or any of any of the other quote-unquote civilized places um so whoever was living here looked like they were probably sheltered could have been like a cult or they just worshipped old hey. gods it's old magic hey kale mm -hmm. um can you talk to dead shit? Uh, I've never actually talked to anything dead before. Uh, so that's a. I mean, you talk no. to me, and I mean, I talk, yeah, I get, I get, I, I mean, <laughs> it depends on the context you know, here, okay? And Lysland. I can commune with the like, undead. I just can't commune with the that's, dead. That's dead. What I that's what I'm asking. Yeah, can can you do that though? I can't. I can't do that. I'm sorry. All right, well, what kind of cleric are you? I'm a, I'm just a, I'm just a priest. <laughs> I don't go and talk to dead people all the time. This is new to me. Because uh, <laughs> I can't talk, talk to dead people either. Me if I'm like, hey, you know, let me go talk to your dead grandma and get a gravy recipe or something. <laughs> I feel like that's a legitimate I, reason to go talk I, to someone's I know, dead grandma. I know, and I'm starting to realize that it might make me some money, but at the same time... Oh my god. As, as this, as this I'm just saying. argument, I guess, could be is happening in the house, um, Lysa, you're currently like digging away at the, the ground, getting the... And Merrick has been kind of standing around, just kind of uh, listening and looking around. He's, he went a couple of the houses. Uh, he comes back, and he's uh, he's looking at the body, looks up at the well, goes over, kind of tilts his head a little bit. I know, it's strange, right? It's not adding up. It's like, do you see this? And kind of like leans down and uh, there's a, kind of leads down where the kind of like the bloody spot is um, on the, 
the well itself, and he's like, Give some water, Lyson. He hands over his water skin. And takes it and kind of, kind of kind of pours the water out on the side and kind of washes away some of the blood. Uh, something carved here on the side. Uh, we never actually inspected the blood. Nope. <laughs> 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 um, he's something carved here. I, I don't know. I've never seen this symbol before and it, if you go over the lysol and take a look it's a, I'll very, take a, it's a very very small um look of a uh, a sun and a full like blazing kind of like sun it's very small but it's very intricately carved with blazing sun and then a full moon kind of sitting right next to each other What do you think it could mean? Well, More importantly, do you think they might he might have been trying to hide it? I'm not sure. He looks over, it's like Whatever happened here happened long before this guy arrived, I think. But then if the attack happened way before you know what? Hold that thought. Yeah, Let's I... assemble everyone. And uh, Lyslin goes ahead and just uses the whistle. You all hear just the whistle go. I'm not calling up like this thing. <laughs> <laughs> Sharon actually like not. I've already Sandra. been tricked once today. <laughs> you said you'd use it if you were in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> I just look out of the door I, of the in house. The middle, in the middle I don't of our go. argument, I'm just going to walk out when I hear it. <laughs> it's not trouble, but it is a development. Please, gather at the well. Got my hopes up again. Of here, course. Kale, if you want, I, I can throw the finished. harpoon at you again. Hold on, hold on. We'll, have to, we'll, have, we'll talk about this later. <laughs> Why is everyone yelling? You give it your all. <laughs> She's, she doesn't like the fact that I can't talk to dead people. I all right, understand. Then, uh, yeah, prompted by error. Well, Michael I mean, if you don't understand, why don't you try talking to dead people? I've you never talked to I dead people. You know what, maybe I will. Maybe you should. Maybe I will. I won't stop you. You, you know what? I, I can talk to dead people. The why error would an 18 hit you? Yeah. I mean, to be fair, we all did die, so... Nice. I did say that. I did make that point. So yeah, well, Kale and uh, <laughs> Violet continue their argument. The side oh, argument yeah, between yeah. the air and Lyslin. You just see Lyslin whip a harpoon at air, get fucking impaled by it, and just yanked over. What? It's like, look down, I'm like, nice. You <laughs> decimate her with Lyslin, one of those what? harpoons. What are you... Yeah, I just have, like, there's a giant asshole in my stomach. I'm like, nice. Lyslin, what the heck? Right? Are you attacking attacking air? Please don't. <laughs> I will kill I you. Said, I said he could. Okay, With a roll hard the deck. Moon. You're coming. Oh, yeah, I rolled it. It was an eighteen. You rolled an eighteen. He hit me. All right, do your damage. <laughs> like finally, I feel something. <laughs> I just whispered that uh, to myself. Minimum damage only four. All right. It's four damage as a harpoon sticks into your side, and it's a decent wound. Uh, <laughs> and you get yanked away from as as Lysen pulls you in with the the harpoon. Like finally, I feel something. <laughs> I just okay. Me. We definitely need to work on your addictions. Here, have some honey. <laughs> Lysen, what the heck? Uh. Air, are you okay? Oh yeah, that's totally fine. Why are you attacking you, are her? Are you casting a spell to get and, her uh, money? Yeah, you heal six hit hit points. Uh, I um, I'm okay. trying to use this one healing thing that I have like for three weeks. Like <laughs> you got a lot of healers in your group. That's the thing. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> two druids, a cleric, a ranger, and a bard. I, yeah, you know, everyone's a healer at some point. Pretty much everyone uh, can heal except for, I guess, uh, Merrick. Merrick. Well, I mean, he can cauterize a wound. <laughs> <laughs> but is that healing? You need me to. He's miracle kind of like, all the time is like, if we're done stabbing each other. No, we're not. As he like pulls me in, I'm just going to like, very discreetly, so like he doesn't even see, I'm just going to stab him. <laughs> <laughs> Do it. <laughs> Make, make it why, why is this always what we do, yo? <laughs> this is 17. This totally is... hits. <laughs> okay. Wait, is there any... You, you, technically, no, guess... have, you technically have Merrick within five feet of Lysla. Okay. So... Well, <laughs> I was going to say if we didn't, I would still get my sneak attack. Oh, yeah. You're the panache <laughs> thing, yeah. Uh, but I won't do that. Rackish audacity is what it is, sorry. Yeah. She already is confused my, beyond belief. I'll just do my normal damage, and I also rolled the lowest I could. Um, so you take six damage. <laughs> so there's a quick little stabbing interaction between Lysolin and there. Yeah, so like as soon as you pull me in, I like kind of knock into your body, but like stab you at the same time. Is this like a turns of endearment now? Is this what? <laughs> is this how you all do it in the Feywild? I told yeah. you, playing with fairies. Life and death, uh, playing Vado, no distinguishment. Okay. <laughs> I'll take your word for it. So was Lysland the third person to get a shot today? <laughs> I know, that he'd be the fourth since Air got one too. Are we done? Can, can we, can we like, you know... <laughs> Are we done trying to kill each other? <laughs> yeah. Like, I wasn't trying to kill him. I could have done a lot worse. If I, I was trying to kill her, I would have used the bow. Are we done? <laughs> yes. Yeah, uh, killing each other, none moon. of us can speak to dead people, so... Uh, you said you could, so why don't you? And I thought well, my brother I and I played rough. <laughs> what are we doing out here? Mark's like, I found something. <laughs> How long did it take? We all we just turned to, to look at Merrick it like... It took us 20 minutes to get to the second part of this conversation. <laughs> I found a symbol. It kind of points at the well. Get it. Anyone recognize this? Have any of us seen the symbol ever? Doesn't seem familiar to any of you guys. I wonder if this has anything to do with the the... Lady who said who resurrected us. Maybe we should get like a tracing of it, you know, like. Ding, ding, ding. Well, etching. yeah, I mean. Yeah, etching. okay. She so here's my I thinking. Since I couldn't couldn't say this because I wasn't here for the longest time, but now that I know everything that's going on, I can fucking make this observation. We familiar, right? Mm -hmm. Lyson throws harpoon at familiar. Familiar disappears. Right. Correct. Yes, I thought it was the determined. Place for yes. So determined that the familiar was trying to lead us into the woods. So what did we do? Went into the woods, and now we're at this village, right? Someone and stole a horse. There's... <laughs> That's what they're oh going for. Oh my god! I swear to God, if if Harold, <laughs> Harold. is gone, I'm going to be so upset because I was going to make him tea, and he really liked my singing. And anyway, um, so. <laughs> Yeah, so now we're in this woods with the with the village that is, for some reason, covered in blood, has some sort of fucking devil worship going on in that house over there, and a, a creepy ass well with a weird ass symbol, and um, does anybody think that and we're looking for magic users as well? Does anybody think that maybe, just maybe? Hags? Well, I'm always thinking about hags. Do I know anything about hags? I guess sea hags. Uh, we got resurrected by hags. I don't know. Well, I don't think don't I would know that, know that sure. if that's a hag. Where we were pretty fucking sure it was a hag. She was big and like, and then was a woman. 
I did say that sea hags are a thing, so. It was the whole reason that Lyslin bought the fucking horseshoe. What do we roll to re to determine whether it's a hag? <laughs> I mean, it's up to your guys' determination if you think it's a hag or not. I think it's a hag. Ooh, sorry. Okay, um, so since I don't recognize the symbol, I'm gonna get back to searching houses, bro. <laughs> since this was kind of a waste of time, okay. No, no, it was very important. Merrick wanted to tell everyone. I was like, well, do we, uh, do we want to get that etching you're talking about? I'll get it. I take the charcoal from the guy's body. I'm gonna search and around the I, well uh, as well. And I okay. take a piece of pepper and I etch a symbol. About what time is it? Uh, at this point, it's uh, about probably no. noon. Mm. Um, so, okay. And uh, so, Shiorin, make an investigation check for me. I believe I have a plus one. Yep, so that's going to be a 14. 14, okay. As you are kind of looking around, uh, Kale, you get down on your hands and knees and you start etching away. And as you do, you kind of press into it and the piece of stone that it makes up where that symbol is goes Ooh. and presses oh, inwards. And uh, oh, Shiren, as you are... What a great uh, suggestion from me. <laughs> as uh, as Shiren, as you're kind of walking around, you feel the earth underneath you kind of kind of look around and the uh it starts to move the well itself starts to Ooh, interesting. out of the way and there is a large hole in the ground and you hear more grinding as you see these stairs grinding out of the earth as it is slowly descending into this dark pit that room that goes underground. Do I oh. fall down the stairs? No, you are. You catch yourself as you kind of you kind of facing down this hall, this large <laughs> hole. Uh, but yeah, you did not you not fall in. And sure, you kind of like have to catch yourself. But you're all standing there. And Merrick kind of leans over. He's like, "Oh, that's Ooh. interesting." <laughs> well, I think we found something. I'm going going uh, down, bro. I think this is the actual <laughs> development. Yes. <laughs> It only See, took us two hours pointless. to find it. I, I, I'm like going back towards the houses. I hear the ground like move, and then I turn around and see the open hole. I'm like, oh, time to go down. I probably won't set off any traps because I'm not stepping on the steps. <laughs> I follow her down. Right. I'm headed down too. Yeah, I'm headed down. Swords I'm out. glad I'm in front of you. Right. Yeah, um, I tried in out as well. You move down this. You all have list. a lot of fun down there. <laughs> you can fit down there, Lyslin. But if you want to stay, you can stay. No, he'll you. go down. He was just All being right. quippy. <laughs> if you're gonna stay, can you check on Harold? <laughs> you're quick. You know, I probably could. I probably should, but, um... Someone Please. stole him. <laughs> I don't it was those guys <laughs> that Violet saw while she was a hamster. They came back. Why leave a good horse in the middle of nowhere? Might as well take him. <laughs> hey, that if, if you want me to go back, I will. But, um, what do you think? I think we should just go down there. And, and if it's gone, then it's gone. And, you know, yeah. You're I right. Then I'll get to see one of you pull the wagon. <laughs> I can do no, that for about two it. hours a day. Um. You guys start heading down. Uh, there's a lightless um, entrance into this, and it goes down probably a good 200 feet. Um, so I'll light a torch. Two hours per rest. Taking up the rear. Um, and uh, you get down to the bottom, and the uh, it's a long hallway, and this stonework is very well made. It is not earth that is around you. This is uh, polished... Uh, man-made stone um, hallway, very large. Um, even Weisling can fit without really much um, problem through here. Uh, it is a hallway with sconces on the walls, but no torches. 
Um, so it is still just lit up by the light of Lysland's torch, and you guys have some dark vision that you can see. Head down the, the hallway, and mm -hmm. oh, so you turn it back on because you had turned them off. Oh yeah, I'll turn it back on. Right. Um, if we already have you... light. Yeah. Yeah. And um, you head down, and the hallway extends forward, probably another fifty feet, before it comes to a door. Um, it is a uh, large metal door. Uh, that has a, uh, a handle uh, on it and the uh, same iconography that you saw up top of the woman in the shawl and the bright, but it's not colored. It's just embossed on the metal door itself. Hand is on my holy symbol, by the way, just saying. So who wants to open the door? <laughs> I made hand. A little. Looks a what kind heavy. of metal does it look like? Steel. Looks um, a little heavy. Violet mage hands and grabs the door and it's... it seems to be locked. Uh, it's locked. I will attempt to unlock it. <laughs> Give me a lockpick check. Alright. You know what I found out? That Skylar found out? Not too long ago, you can add skills to your list of skills. So you can actually add like a lockpick check yep. to mm, your your list that. of skills. I that was not aware of that on the Indian Beyond. You could, yeah. I I'm not expertise in that. Yeah, no. Okay. Oh, that's a good roll. Uh so that's a nineteen total? Yeah. Nineteen? 19. Uh yeah, you kind of looked at oh float down a little bit to where the hole is and you could and working at it it seems to be a well-made lock but you are able to kind of fit all of your tumblers in and get it just right and the door kind of loosens a little bit and if you want to open it you can i'll just like step back and let the mage hand do it <laughs> the mage hand reaches forward kind of grabs and starts to pull and it's not that it's like stopped it's just the door is heavy so that unfortunately the 10 pounds of weight that the hand can pull it's not enough to pull the door open oh okay well i get oh, over there seems like I... the strongest of us should do it i look at Lyslin. <laughs> <laughs> i got this i got this <laughs> so i go and i try to so hard i go and i try this. to pull the door so you you grab it and it's heavy so you have to like kind of grab it with both hands <clears throat> but it's not a, like it's not tough enough that you couldn't do it without just your normal passive strength check but it's like <clears throat> and it kind of opens up and kind of grinds against the floor a little bit and you are all met with a horrendous smell of uh, it's an irony smell that's oh, in the boy. air oh. and you look out in front of you and Across the way is another door, but there is seemingly no way to it. It is just stuck in the um, on the other side of the of what looks to be a giant pit. And uh, as you look at it, it goes uh, sixty feet to your right, sixty feet to your left, and one hundred and twenty feet out in front of you. Um, and so it is just barely visible with some of the light that there is something on the other side of this. And there actually is. Uh, some sconces in here that are lit up. Hey, Shiorin. The mm -hmm. bottom of the bottom of the pit is, as you look down, seems to be covered in a very viscous red liquid. That every once in a while you see the <laughs> bubbles come up from it. I do not like this one bit. I don't either. Um, on the opposite side, like I said, there's the door, and there is a lever. What do you think would happen if we just threw Close the door and left. in it? No. Oh, threw the crystals in it? Yeah, nothing bad could happen from that. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> nothing could bad happen from us putting in red bubbling liquid. I sent it nothing to the fire. Nothing bad happen. Still <laughs> door. Uh, so, okay. So, um. Caitlin, Me and Eric can get across. Yeah, should we? Should we hit the lever? See what happens. 
I feel like we should. I don't think. I think, think, I think that... we're being. Maybe see what we if it connects to something that we can see. I would like to. Is there like any dirt on the ground? From where where you're standing right now? Yeah, like any like dust or anything like that. I can I can collect. No, that's pretty. It's pretty clean down here. I could. I think I can druid craft dirt. Can I not? I could give you enough. some dirt. It's probably more plants than I dirt. Draw I don't know if you dirt. Did Hold you need on. something, Kale? I'm having a look. Yeah, Kate, you, you can you can create water, right? I can. I can create water. Oh, you got it. I just want to see. If there's like, if you throw a little bit of water out there, maybe there's like a thing we can stand on or something that we can't see. That's a good idea. Um. So how how wide did you say the room was? Sixty feet. Otherwise, as you look out. The walls on either side of you are 60 feet out on either side, and then there's 120 feet to the door. Okay, so Shiorin's going to hold out her uh, her trident, but it's at an angle upwards. And around um, a, enough to, uh, I believe it would be, well, I just need to make a 30-foot cube in front of us. Um, she's going to use Create Water, but it's going to be a 30-foot cube of water that falls as rain. Okay. She kind of just... I'm just going to grease this little, like, almost like a cloud, but then just, just pouring rain down. Doesn't seem to hit anything in front of you guys. Uh, and as it hits the pool of whatever you want to assume it is, um, it starts... And you, you look down at it, and you see the water moving and rippling, and more perceptive ones of you notice that around different spots of the um, of the liquid you see slight partings of the water like something is moving underneath it and there's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, twenty, thirty of these things moving towards this area where your rain is falling down and, and you see kind of this like jumble of movement under the liquid you can't see what it is unfortunately but there is a large amount of movement Oh, underneath where the rain is falling. I would like to guiding bolt it. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> Do they have bloodfish here? What? Do they have bloodfish here? Fish that's swimming in blood? Is that a thing? <laughs> <laughs> that is a... Uh, let's see here. Guiding bolt, guiding bolt, guiding bolt. It's a natural 19, so that's a good sign. And then it's plus my wisdom thing, so yeah, that's a uh, 22. 22? Ah, uh, yeah. You guys, uh, you, you just immediately blast into the water at the at this movement, and it kind of crashes in, and the blood kind of moves, uh, splashes out in this big uh, wave as the uh, guiding bolt hits the surface. Um, and you see some dark shapes for an instant as the uh, waves kind of part, but it's impossible to really see as it kind of immediately floods back in. You hit something, but you did see a number of them. So nothing floated to the top? Nope. They're a little bit more than bloodfish, I, I'd assume. They could take one of those. So if we're going to continue here, I think we should avoid falling into that. I think we should avoid walking over there entirely until we figure out a way to kill what's ever in there. A. B. Avoid curious. falling into the big Ooh, pit of disgusting and probably curious. unsafe blood. So the other side and of the there door. is a lever. There's another door. How about, on the other side. How about <laughs> I've got an idea. How about we, um, you guys stay over here and me and Air will fly over and open the door and we'll see. If there's a giant blood shark that comes out from the from the water and bites one of you, I'm not saving you because it's just too late. Do you want one of us That's to burst the door term. on this side in case it attempts to close when you flick the switch? Yeah. Acceptable terms. Well, I think we should open the door before we flip the switch. See what's on the other side, yeah. right? Unless the yeah. unless the switch opens the door. In that no, case. I think the switch might bring that up. Oh, uh, by the way, did you say that we passed a few doors? I'm sorry? Did you say that we passed a few doors in the hallway down here? 
Okay. I just couldn't remember if I was uh, misremembering or not. How far down is this? Uh, uh, the pool blood? is about 30 feet down. 30 feet? And how high is the ceiling? Out of high, the ceiling's about uh, 15 feet above you. Out of curiosity right. to see if it freezes, I want to cast uh, Frostbite. Okay. Can I... uh, constitution check of uh, 14, or saving throw. You're doing it at the liquid. It's nothing. There's nothing to target, unfortunately. So. Oh, that's the... right. It's not a creature. It's a creature. And you kind of blast the um, frostbite and kind of <laughs> kind of freezes over the top, but it then just kind of like starts to float. And as it's the little piece of frozen liquid starts to float, you see something come up and grab it. You almost looks it almost looks like fingers, and it just kind of breaks apart and kind of gets pulled underneath the uh, the surface. Yeah, something's oh. grabbing. Say we fly up towards the ceiling <laughs> and then cross. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that's what we'll do. <laughs> Alright. So you guys move out into the empty space and start going up towards the ceiling and then out towards the door, correct? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. um, you guys get uh, out a little bit and up. You get about 20 feet out, and the you both are kind of bathed in this red light all of a sudden as you look up, and there are sigils up on the ceiling Ooh. that boom, and you both feel this pressure hit you both, and I need you both to make strength saving throws. <laughs> oh, I'm not Always strong. look up. Strength saving throw. Mm -hmm. All right. Mine's an eight. Well, I am very weak. We about to go swimming. <laughs> <laughs> Mine's a twelve. Twelve. Um. So, Violet, you are mm, able I'm about to... to go swimming. <laughs> Valley, you're able to hold yourself, not steady, but you are slowly falling as you're beating your wings against this pressure, trying to keep yourself up. Air was not ready for it and gets poof, pushed down, and she is about oh, dark ten and feet. My old friend. She's about ten feet Can up I just from spell the ground. Magic. Um, yes, as your as your action, as you look up, you kind of, poof, and I need you to roll a d20 and add your spell modifier to it. Okay, I'm gonna roll this crack and dice instead. Come on. Okay, and add my what? Spell casting modifier, so your wisdom modifier. Okay, that's going to be a 20. Okay, so you are able to dispel the sigil that was above you, and you feel the pressure kind of oof, off of you, but your cousin dropped all the way to about 10 feet from the uh, surface of the liquid as she's trying to keep herself up. And air, as you look down, you see the the liquid bubbling underneath you and you start to see this what looks almost kind of like an object come out but it's writhing and wriggling and you notice that as you're as you're as it's you're slowly getting closer to it it is a mass of hands of dark rotted blood cover hands that are literally piling on top of each other to start to start to grab at you and you are getting real close to them getting it reminds to me of that Steven um, universe thing under the earth Reminds me of Castlevania. Uh, Violet, you are seeing this as you feel the pressure come off of you. You've you've dropped about ten feet yourself, so you're closer to kind of door level. But air is all the way down, about ten feet from the water itself. I'm just gonna be like if looking. If I can at the get out I'm another, like, Whoa. Uh, if I can get out another dispel magic, I'll dispel that one. As well, and then it'll be me for okay. fucking third levels, guys. Uh, before you. Before you can do that, Air, I need you to make a uh, another strength saving throw. Ooh, about how far did you say out they got? They got about twenty feet out. Harpooner. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. Harpooner. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Strength saving throw. That's landed on my journal, so it's cocked. Oh, okay. That's an eighteen. All right, you are able to 
<laughs> you start pushing real hard against it, and you are slowly starting to get up uh, as these hands are coming up, and one of them kind of like jumps off of the uh, the pile. A couple of them actually do. Uh, does a eighteen hit you? Yep. So one of the hands jumps up and grabs onto your ankle and tears into you for. Uh, six points of uh, just kind of it's a it's a mix of bludgeoning and piercing as it's, as it starts digging into you like ripping through your the flesh of your ankle um, at this point like, violet rude. you can make your uh, another roll for the dispel natural 19 five 24 right. you're able to you're able to dispel that glyph as well as air. You finally feel the pressure release from you, and you just zip up with this thing just flying off of your. Oh, okay, uh, I was just saying I'm gonna try to pry it off. <laughs> it's the, the the pressure of you just whoosh, zipping up, kind of releases it from its grasp, and it kind of and you it, as you guys see this as well now as it falls, it is just a disembodied hand that is covered in rotting. As it drops down back into the water and of whatever the liquid is, and you see the pile that was kind of rising up kind of slowly start to dissipate as it kind of just all dips underneath the, the pool at the bottom. Are you okay, Air? Yeah, that was really fun, actually. Real, you know, get the adrenaline pumping a little. It's my kind of party, you know what I mean? I was half ready if to look up, you again. Any more sigils? I mean, that's, Make that's a cool. Check. Next time, you know, if I can't get myself back up, I'm cool with that. Perception. That was not a very good one that time. Um, plus eight is a thirteen. Thirteen. Um, you don't. What you see is a line of them that kind of are is at this 20 foot range um that that's why you both hit one as you kind of passed uh, underneath them and it's just kind of this line that goes across the roof oh wonderful excellent okay um i would like to attempt to cast uh, infestation. Okay. I think we need to go and get that lever, honestly. What are you, what are you casting infestation on? Where is the lever again? It's mm -hmm. way uh, so through the room? It's by the door. Uh, uh, that's on the opposite side. On the opposite side? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I thought it was closer. I can't cast infestation. Um, so the question okay. I have is the line of that like pushes you down. Does it go across like this so way? So you guys are facing and it's going this way across. So it doesn't go any further forward. It's just a line across the ceiling. Okay. So like if we try okay, to cool. power so like through, line, yeah. we could, Possibly. if we didn't get pushed all the way down. Possibly. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna be like Lyslin, harpoon me, um, so that he can pull me back if I get pushed down. <laughs> okay, if you're sure this time. <laughs> Don't miss, and I inspire um, him. If you come back, we can probably just tie you up. Nah, it's cool. Just harpoon safer, you know. <laughs> I, I inspire him for Lyslin. twenty-one. Yeah. He's hacking her again with the harpoon. The harpoon safer. Okay, she roll, said your, <laughs> roll your damage. Merrick's like, could you just tie a rope to her? Why does it need that's, to be a harpoon? That's what I said. Fun this, I think more fun this way. Uh, seven I, piercing damage. I oh, think she's just okay. into it, honestly. Yeah, more fun this way. She's absolutely <laughs> into it. Don't kink Yeah, she's definitely into it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you have a traveling in your back now. Nice. Okay. <laughs> it's probably in my ass because I got my wings. <laughs> um, I am going to try to power through this thing. So you. Goes to rate. 
you move straight through and you pass underneath the glyph that was dispelled by your cousin and nothing else happens. I okay, nice. fire air as well. <laughs> okay. Got my day. Um, um and the head over. Move forward, Violet, are you following? Mm-hmm. Violet, you let me um, go first, just in case. Be careful! I've only got about fifty feet. <laughs> I'm harpooned. Well, that's the thing. You get about fifty feet out, and there's no longer any more rope. Oh, I'm like, all right. I guess this is the end of the line. <laughs> I pull out the harpoon and continue going. I'll quickly yank the harpoon. Back. I have uh, more rope. No more uh, safety net. <laughs> well, it's gone now. Um, and, uh, the you harpooned ball her for absolutely no back. reason. It's not, <laughs> it's not quite enough to pull it all the way back, and the harpoon falls down and kind of, uh, hits the very edge of the water, and, or the, the liquid, and you see immediately all of these things start moving towards, and they start, to, like, crawling over themselves to try to get up as you're pulling the harpoon up, and they, they get about a good, like, ten feet up as they're, and they slowly crawl their way back down and under the liquid. Um, Air and Violet, you get to the other side, and there's a door there. It is flush with the wall, and there's a lever to the right side of it. Air is the antithesis of everything I have learned in my there is uh, over my lifetime. No, there's no handle on this door. It's just, you can see the crease, but it is flush with the wall. Seems like we have to use the yeah. lever. Are you ready? Oh, uh, your oh, baby should... I was gonna kick it. Oh, <laughs> you have a main hand, bro. You can totally kick yeah. it if you want. Do you want to help me? I'm also not very There's strong. the door. I'm not yeah. strong, but I, I guess I'll body slam it. <laughs> yeah, go, go, go. Sweet ass, right. let's do it. We got sure. this. I'm, uh, gonna use I, I'm inspired, make, so maybe we'll go some, better. Some athletics checks. All right. Oh, Can I choose to use DM's apple. inspiration after I roll? Uh, the You can before I tell you the result. You decide after you roll the first one, you can decide if you want to use it and then tell me. But if you tell me first and then decide, then that doesn't work. Okay, I don't. I don't want to use it. Okay. Um, it's 10. <laughs> I rolled a 15, but then I did roll and I got a 6. So, I got 21. Uh, 21. 21. Um, so you both <laughs> into the door, and it is a metal door. Yep. That is in its picture, and unfortunately, the weight of two fairies slamming into a steel door not quite not enough much. to not quite enough to uh, blow open this door. Unfortunately, I guess All we right, try the lever. The lever. It lever it is. <laughs> you guys Medical just see from one hundred and twenty. Uh, didn't you have that ball of fire that you could throw at things? Uh, yes. What do you need me to throw it at? I just figure throw it into the hole, see how many. I you can was burn. thinking about that, too, honestly, because you know I could do that too. Bring him to the surface. <sighs> kind of into the water. Into the, you see water into the liquid, and the uh, the you see the motion underneath as they start to gather around that area, and I mean, they're not really like some of them. S- s- sort of surface um but they just kind of seem to be attracted to any kind of movement that touches or gets near the liquid and as you guys in these few moments before they do what they're going to do with the door you guys can kill a few of them with cantrips um but you don't seem to be making much of a dent um are you guys pulling the lever pull the lever Pull the lever, Kronk. Wrong yeah. lever! Wrong lever! <laughs> Everyone starts falling. <laughs> yeah, you guys all fall into the liquid. Have fun. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and just brace the door that uh, the uh, four of us are at, just in case. Mm-hmm. Uh, they pull the lever down, and the door in front of you guys kind of <sighs> opens up, and underneath, very oh, it was imperceptible because it was like that perfectly flush to the uh, to the wall. A part of the wall kind of comes out and just goes all the way across the 120 foot, 120 foot range all the way to the other side, um, making a bridge that is a good 15 feet across. 
We I... did it! What All you right. can see on the other side of the door, uh, Air and uh, Violet, is a spiral staircase that continues down. And now that the door is open, you hear something that you did not hear before. You hear a very soft... <laughs> Very soft sobbing coming from somewhere down the darkness that sits in front of you down the staircase. And that is where we will call it for tonight. Oh, man. One more hour. One <laughs> more hour. One more hour. can finally be a cleric, yes. Right when I became a bard. <laughs> Still can't believe you can't talk to dead things. It's a third level spell. I don't have a third level spell. You're useless. I can talk uh, to yeah. animals, Kale. <laughs> <laughs> it was a wild ride, wasn't it? I shouldn't. I, I shouldn't just, be so mean I to you. You are a cleric that guys... actually heals. <laughs> I just wanted you guys to investigate the goddamn well. <laughs> <laughs> Merrick. <laughs> Hello, oh, I, Merrick. I, I seriously thought the way you had it was like these things like came out of the well and like stabbed the guy or something, you know? Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. I'm just like, I tried to get that briefing towards it. And like, there's a journal that talks about the well. She goes to the well and it's really shallow. The dude's laid against it. All the blood's missing for some reason while he's sitting next to the well. Like, <laughs> See, that's hey. the thing though. Like, secret passages aren't Lysland's forte. It's like, it, I'm a priest. And, yeah. Unfortunately, the one that found the journal is the one that doesn't exactly excel in critical thinking. Yeah, I just go for it, you know? I went down the well, that was the best I got. And then she didn't mention that she finds the journal, so... <laughs> nope. Yeah, what are we supposed to do? Oh, Sharon was averse to touching the symbol, because she had no idea, like, what would happen if she did. It was... What I, like it wasn't frustrating because I love you guys and I love the way you guys play, but it was it was such like a tease because every time you guys would be like you'd go to the well and then you wouldn't do anything and you'd go do something else and then I'd give you another clue and you'd go to the well and then nope and then just... <laughs> yeah, you know what would be hilarious if I if I was starting to dig the thing and I found a stair, you know? Yeah. <laughs> you dug a really deep grave. It was a shallow grave, but I was about like digging it, so I figured you know. I was exactly. considering once the symbol the was space. revealed of just, like, horse-kicking the symbol just for the hell of it. And that would have been hilarious to have that press and then break, and then just this just be sealed. And for metagame knowledge that, uh, I'll tell you right now, it doesn't matter at this point, the familiar was that wizard. And the familiar was there to lead you to the dead body, to his dead wizard, that... He, all he all that familiar wanted was to you to go to that wizard all that was with that familiar wizard. that's what I figured was gonna happen especially all after life it, it was gonna be <laughs> holding on to it. Eggs. <laughs> it was gonna hold on to its essence just long enough to try to get help because it, 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 it it's a it's a familiar creature it knows magic and it knows some people can resurrect people and it wanted you to help its wizard companion. But you killed it. That's sad. <laughs> I thought it was a different Listen, if cat, I can't but... understand a black cat, Lysland's experiences kill it. I think I've scarred you all too much. Or you have all been scarred too much by other DMs. <laughs> Sean. <laughs> yeah. That 100%. Was 120%. Absolutely. Like, that. That was entertaining. So. Also, thinking what I would do to my players, you know, I'm like, mm, trap. <laughs> I still think the most fucking traumatic thing that we've been through as a group was fucking... 67 lightning damage. That was, that was great. Fun. Just decimated him. Has 27 health. Oh <laughs> Total. My God. Okay. Adult dragon Wait. versus level Adult three. Adult dragon. Does anyone have a uh, idea for a name for this episode? 
uh, completely skirting around the problem Just... every single time. <laughs> That's a little too Investigate long. the damn well. The opposite of the, uh, the opposite of the chair thing, where Matt's just like, it's just a chair. I'm sitting here. It's not just a well. <laughs> just go simple, man. Well, well, well. I yeah, that's a good one. Well, well, well. <laughs> that's it. I like that. I really like that. Yeah, that's good. All right. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and raid uh, Bromad the Nomad since I actually have a friend online for once. Um, but first. Do a little bit of outro. Thank you, whoever watched uh, Load Last Yeah, Day thank for, you. Yes, thanks for, for tuning in. For uh, joining us. <laughs> yeah, thanks for showing um, up, y'all. Yeah, thanks for sticking with us, too. Mm -hmm. I will be back myself on uh, Sunday at 7 o'clock p.m. Um, Eastern to play some more Mass Effect 2. Um, if anyone wants to join me then, that's that'd be great. I like uh, chatting with people while, uh, while I'm playing. Um, everyone have a great night. I'm actually in a really good mood after that because that was a fun session. Yeah, and don't we'll forget to investigate Friday. the well. Don't piss off Tiamat. <laughs> and never, ever, don't ever kill your own father. let the party. <laughs> don't kill your own father. That's uh, another one. Don't kill your own father in front of Wait, your twin brother. Wait, before or after? <laughs> Double checking I spelled it correct. Alright. Everyone ready to sign off? Yep, I'm ready. Yep. Alright, I'm hitting the raid button now. And we've got five, four, three, two, one, and bye bye. Bye. Ah, there they are. All right. Uh, I see. I was going to use those cards.